Welcome to Broad Ideas. Hi. Hi. Today we have our girls back. Tamman and Roxy are joining us from Women on Top. We love them. We love when they come to see us. And they're here again. So let's welcome Tamman and Roxy. Sometimes when the world feels insane, you can take a little peek inside of Rachel's little brain. All these thoughts are swirling round and round inside to join us on this journey as we take a little ride. We'll talk about dogs and kids and things. We'll talk about chicks and tampon strings. We'll talk about boys that make you cry. We'll talk about death because people die. Those um, they're just prescription right. sunglasses. Sunglasses, yeah. and I left my glasses so, in the car. I'm gonna next time I'll see you. I have to wear sunglasses. So apparently, <laughs> the whole time I was wondering because you were just sitting there well, right, I in your sunglasses. I'm just trying to be cool. It's a really strong. Like I can't really see you, but wait, I can totally they're, see you now. <laughs> well, feel free to wear them. It's a mood. It's bright enough. It is a movie. I thought you were just Are wearing them. Yeah, I'm recording. Okay. I thought you were just wearing them because the lights were so bright. <laughs> no. and you were like, she has break. known me for like five years. And she's like, oh, that's why you wear sunglasses inside. I'm like, yeah, because I can't see. <laughs> They're prescription. <laughs> do you think oh I'm just being? Do you I'm work? Like, you I wonder if mine will work for you. What are you? Oh. Minus what? Plus. I'm plus. Oh, no, no. I can see close, close. Like, this is great. Oh, see, I can't. Like, I can look at this microphone. But, like, <laughs> <laughs> but I literally, I actually don't think I look as old as I actually probably do because I can never see myself in the mirror. Oh, my God. I've thought that recently. I'm I like, put on I my glasses look so like, young. I have wrinkles. <laughs> I don't want to look in the mirror that close. I'm just like. It's hard to put on makeup now, too, a little bit. Like, without the glasses. Like, agreed. really eye makeup, well, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's I have about stigmatism. Contacts. It's just a mess over mm-hmm. here. Guys. The 40s. Time the f- is <laughs> it's only been a week. <laughs> it's only been a week, but you're there. <laughs> How did it happen so fast? Wait a minute. I have a question what? about the Bobby girl and the podcast. <gasps> oh. oh. I did a deep dive on her, obviously. Mm-hmm. I want to know about Bobby Altoff. She reached out to me okay. on my DMs and asked if I would be in her podcast. Um, this is before she even had a podcast. Um, she was trying to find, (laughs) she was trying to find guests. You're like, Um, sure. And she even said like, could I help? Like, not could I help, but is there, like, she doesn't know how to get guests. Um, she was even said that she would pay people at the time. She, she's very been open about that. She asked if I'd do her show. And I said, yes, as sort of my character from Pretty Little Liars, Jenna. And then we asked her to be on our show and she's like totally unassuming, sweet, beautiful, little, um, very chatty, very young. Mm-hmm. Um, we did our show with her and then she did a show with me, but then she never released it. Oh, I she think didn't release it. She didn't it. release it because I think she was ultimately going to release it. But then she got so big so fast with Drake. So it's not like she could put Drake and then Tamman. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I'm super self-aware. I get it. Like if I was in the beginning of her show and like, you know, while she was up and coming and stuff like that, I get it. But which would have been great. But now that she's getting such huge people like Drake and, you know, Mark Cuban, I think it'd be strange to be like that girl from Pretty Little Liars is next on the show. <laughs> so know. it wasn't released, but we saw the video a clip. clip. You saw a clip. There was lots oh. of clips she put on, but then she does yeah. this thing that she told me about. Um, she takes videos on and off all the time. Mm. And she, it's strange. I don't know. So when a video doesn't do well, she'll take it off and then she'll retry it. Mm. And retry it and retry it and retry it and see if okay. the algorithm. So Drake works. obviously didn't do well, so that's why she took it off. Who, which anymore. one, Drake? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, Drake is on there, right? No, well, she it's took been, it no, there's off. Like a been taken off. Uh-huh. Because you know why, right? No, it's so it it makes sense. It's because he asked her about the tiger. Uh, is it tiger? Oh, tiger uh-huh. yeah, song. Yeah, yeah, and she was like, I don't know it, and he's like, You know, Ratch City. And she was like, no. And he played it for her. Mm-hmm. And so it was lightly playing in the background of their oh, interview. Just, oh, because they would have had to pay licensing. to play it? Yeah. Oh. So because of licensing, they had to remove That's it. That's what That's it what I heard. There's so many theories. Mm, yeah. Another was that she was like standing she, at the concert, like looking uninterested. Yeah, but that's yeah. that her. Here, here's the thing. The, the shtick has been done. <laughs> yeah. Like the shtick has been done for a while. It's, you know, it is, uh, Zach. Galifianakis. He, he did that right. with his show. Yeah. It's been around for a while. It's an alter ego. She is not that person. She is the the sweetest, most demure, 
um, people pleaser, lovely mm-hmm. girl, like that had, does a shtick. Yeah. And the shtick makes people feel uncomfortable, mm-hmm. I think. And it, some makes people, some people laugh and they think it's hilarious and other people, they don't understand. So it feeds the fury. Mm-hmm. And that's what like kind of feeds that algorithm, whether you like it or not. Like it makes you feel uncomfortable because the, the alter ego is, she says what people might say, want to say, but like mm-hmm. can't. Or so right. she never can hide. Say. Yeah, would never mm-hmm. say. So she can hide behind that. But I think there's a there's a part of it that is really smart. Um, is it fresh? I don't know. But um, like power to her. Like mm. I, you know, as I get older, I just want everyone to succeed. Right. Yeah. You know, I think when I was younger, I used to look at it as a competition about like, oh, if that person can see, got, succeeds, then it means yeah. that I'm not good enough or I'm not, you know. And I'm like, she's in her 20s. She's got two young kids. Mm. Good for her. Like I think, I think why not? You know, if you hate it whatever, if you like it, whatever. It's just, it's just someone out there at least putting themselves out there Mm -hmm. and they might fail. And, and, and it's, it's the people who really try that succeed sometimes. And for somebody so young to like be able to put themselves out there like that and like, she's created like her whole business and her brands and absolutely, it's insane. But it was funny when she came into the studio to record with us, she was like, should I do the alter ego or do you want me to be me when we do this right, interview? Right, that's true. And we said, no, be you. We want to like know more of you. Should we have done the alter ego? I think, it would, I think it's <laughs> more interesting to do. Oh, should we have yeah. done the alter ego? We probably, no, no. Should, should do we you guys have, have one you'd like to do now? <laughs> yeah, can you guys please now do okay, it? Whatever the, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even think I could do it. I know what yours. would it be? It's, it's my shtick is not because I I'm not a people pleaser, but because I was bullied, right? Mm. There's a version of that character, mm. like her alter ego or an alter ego like that, yeah. that I f- can feel like someone's bullying me, even mm. though I know it's not. You mm. know, like calling me on my shit. So I don't think I would be that type of alter ego. Like where you kind of like call people out. No, I don't think that that's my shtick. Well, hers okay. is very similar to like an Aubrey Plaza in a sense where right. it's just like very dry. so dry. So it's dry. so yeah. dry mm-hmm. and I could watch it all day long. Mm-hmm. I like it because I like when people feel uncomfortable. Right. It makes me feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I enjoy watching it. The other it. person feels uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I like it. I'm like, oh, this is Weird. I wish I was, yeah. you know, <laughs> like her and I did one and it was, I thought it was really fun. Like it was, I was, I played exactly what she was playing. I wasn't okay, playing so myself. We Cause you were yeah. in on it. Yeah. You were in on it. I was in on it, but I was, and we were I was, like, yeah. Tamman, like what? I was, fucking, was I was fucking with her the whole time. That's what it felt yeah. like. But and I she knew. knew. Yeah. You guys like were both in on forth. it? Or no? Yeah. We were both in. She told me. She was both in it. She was asking me crazy questions and I was just fucking with her the whole time. Yeah. You yeah. were like, you said something like $300,000 vacation in Orange County <laughs> yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're a dream vacation. Or like, yeah. I got defensive at first watching it. I'm like, she better not have fucked with her. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, she did. I was like watching it, like ready. And then she was mad. like, are you an extra on Pretty Liars? I was like, yeah. And she's like, you know, and I was like, I didn't really get to, you know, say anything, but they they gave me three times more than the people who work there. So, and she was like, yeah. And I was like, cause I was the best. I didn't have to talk and I still got paid a lot. You know, like just right, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. You know, you people know? do that. Mm-hmm. I feel like, do you remember, it was mm-hmm. years ago, remember Chris Klein, is that his name? Chris Klein, wait. Oh God. Oh, the actor? Brain. Yeah, the actor. And yeah. he did a whole interview, but he was joking and it was very male chauvinistic and like, yeah. it almost canceled him. But it was actually hilarious because he would, you know what? I better not speak on this because <laughs> I don't know what he said. This whole podcast is going to be taken out. I don't know what he said. With the cancel culture, just because uh, you brought it up, do you guys think there's redemption from that? Like if somebody depends on what was just do. talking about Depends this. on what you do. Depends what was she saying? Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, how is there no redemption? Like she was just yeah. talking about like how harsh there it is There should be right. redemption, but it depends on, on what, what it was. You do what and level what it is. Of, and I also okay. believe in learning like right. the things that yeah. we might have said in our early 20s because we were just idiotic and weren't aware like I always say I'm not going to be political but if you vote for someone in office the first time I give you a pass because you don't know right and you maybe get a little uh you watch certain things and you're like well this could be good for the economy or whatever but then when you vote for them again knowing what has happened, mm-hmm. then I don't give you a pass. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's the same for cancer culture. If you've done something in your past, I think that there should be, to a certain extent, some mm-hmm. kind of redemption. But if you keep doing it, you should be fucked. Like, fuck you. Mm-hmm. You know, you should be able to learn from it because if you don't learn, then how do we even grow as a society? Right. My question is, every mm-hmm. single person that we talk to feels the same way. Who 
is it then that's so into the cancel culture? Because most people that we speak to right. yeah. are very compassionate and understanding and think that there has to be learning curves. Right. And I think it's very different mm. to be canceled for saying something mm -hmm. and actually harming people. Right. Like those things But your are, words can harm people. They can. Mm -hmm. Right. But, so it depends. But the things that people are being canceled for are being held at the same standard as things that are actually really causing damage. Yeah, and right? there's context, right? I think yeah. a lot of these times, like we're not in the situation where that the context was around and Rachel was, hadn't, you know, she was on our podcast and said something and then all, like it became such a big thing, but mm -hmm. there was no context around it. And I right. think mm -hmm. that's the issue too, yeah. is like, if you aren't listening to the surrounding factors, mm -hmm. it just, you, you, you take, you pick and choose. And then of course, the first thing people go to is that person's canceled. And you look at, and, and I'm not going to speak directly to this case, but um, who just got, who was going to go to jail? And then Kevin Spacey, mm. he just got cleared of all charges that every single charge. And they did a really deep dive case, like a, 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 um, a court court. Mm. He, he was in court for a very long time and he was mm -hmm. cleared of everything. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's true or not, but they did their due diligence. They had, you know, the the jurors and everyone acquitted him of saying, no, he did not do these things that he was accused of. Mm, and then that. my question is, well, does he now have a career or we have a, or have we already canceled him just based on the mm. fact that we think it happened, even though we right. don't have all the evidence? Right. right. You know, right. and it's hard for him. Like he's probably done now, No, no matter... If it was yeah, true how do you come back? Right. Exactly. How do you come back? Yeah. yeah. Because just... brand and name it are so much now. Mm. Right. You know, your reputation. It's all of that. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. It's just like the same thing. Like growing up, if there's a rumor, mm -hmm. everyone's going to believe it, you mm -hmm. know, or people put things out there. It's yeah. like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it can be really damaging, especially when the things are false. That's what, I mean, think about if that happened to your child. Mm -hmm. Think about right. if your child got right. pinned for saying something or doing something mm -hmm. and it was false information. And how do you get back from that? Mm -hmm. You know, like I do think in some ways we do have to look for avenues in which we can clear people so that they can learn from it and move on. But just like you said, if they keep mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. It depends what it is, yeah. you know, when it comes to like sexual abuse in any form, mm -hmm. whether like towards a woman like that for me. I'm kind of done with you. Like, Child abuse. Even, yeah, yeah, even if, you exactly. know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's just a hard line in the sand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, women's rights, issue, things like that. You know, but but yeah, we're all dumb and stupid at some point. I mean, I can't even yeah. imagine. Like, thank God they didn't have Twitter and Instagram when I was a child actor oh because God. the shit. Like, I didn't even know what. Like, oh, I was like, I didn't know. Right. And you and and you, your frontal lobe of your brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25 years old. To so the shit that you do mm -hmm. early on in your 20s. Thank God I didn't have a record of that. Oh, my God. Can you imagine on mm. YouTube, like, <laughs> no. the drunk channel? <laughs> no. <laughs> drunk, Roxy's drunk no. channel. Don't you. Oh, thank Listen, you. Listen, we recapped a story when I was in um, Indonesia. My best friend came. And the last time I saw her drunk, I was 25 in Vegas. And my husband, who wasn't my husband at the time, caught her vomit in his hands oh. <laughs> because he was so nice and he didn't want her to get kicked out oh of the my club. God. Oh, my God. And oh, he went like, like that? He, he put caught her vomit. I was like, oh my that God. is the moment I wanted to marry you. <laughs> and he, he, like, she was about to vomit and he's like, slow motion, I remember. <laughs> oh. His hands oh just went out and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, <laughs> And he's holding it and like, the security is like, who's vomiting? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. it's all good. It's like dripping. Oh, yeah. No. It's all good. So goes to the bathroom, washes his hands, and she didn't get kicked out. And I was like, that is a nice that's guy. That's true love. That's, right that's true love. You're like, true I love. I'm like, that's nasty. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> nasty. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, that's, a good, that's a good night to go out on, though. Like with the JT like, oh, yeah. story. That's like, that wasn't my very last night. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I gave up drinking that night. But Rachel had a year later me at that point. I remember. <laughs> Remember because then we went to a wedding and she was like looking what at wedding? me. We went to Jill's wedding oh. and I was like, I'm not drinking. Don't worry. I'm not going to drink. <laughs> like, don't worry. You don't have to watch me. And then it was like five o'clock and I had my wine and you came up to me and you were like, I thought you weren't drinking. Mm. And I was like, I, I wasn't. Just and one. Till yeah. now, I'm just going to have a glass of wine. Yeah. Mm. You're like, that's not drinking. Yeah. 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 And how and many glasses did you have? I had a weekend, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <had a> weekend. <laughs> yeah. But that was the beginning of the end. 
And then when I woke up in a bikini and hadn't gone out in a bikini, <laughs> you know. I was like, <laughs> why am you I have, in a bikini? You were done. I you could were bring done. a bikini out with me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, how did yeah. I get back to the house, house put on a bikini, too. go and, somewhere in it? Wow. And then wake up in it. It's that's, what she wore to the wedding. Was yeah. it your bikini or was it somebody else's? It was my bikini. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. No, that's but good. that makes it weird. <laughs> a little better. Yeah, if it was someone else's, that would make sense. You were out at a place. They someone were like, gave you their, you bikini. Bikini. their bikini. I made it back to the place, got yeah. the bikini, went somewhere else, and came back. You know what I mean? Yeah. I bet you were popular <laughs> that night, them, though. We just had a, if you uh, went on a bikini, I mean. Yeah. We had a psychiatrist. That's why I, like, bring this girl to my party. <laughs> we had a psychiatrist on, re- like, just an hour ago um, before I saw you guys. And he said there's, like, rings about, like, issues that you have. And the first ring mm. is, like, if you can't control it and it controls you, mm. it's a problem. Mm. That's right. And mm. if it's ruining the relationships and, uh, you, like. Changing your life. Changing like, your yeah. life mm. and you can't function it's an issue. And then Roxy and I live in that <laughs> second ring a lot. Like, That's called a neurotic ring. It's not ring. a full issue, but like some people find it weird. Like, you know, am I going to get poisoned every time I eat? Like that. But it doesn't affect your life so much that you won't eat. Mm-hmm, you know right. what I mean? And then there's the other, what's the third ring? We don't the have in that ring. ring. Like, Sanity? Maybe, <laughs> no, maybe it's like you just choose that that's like a quirk. Because you think it's like going to improve your life or yeah, something. Yeah, like Roxy doesn't shit in toilets and she's like, it's a quirk of mine. You know, that's, <laughs> the third, that's the third ring. Because we don't ring. shit. But I think she lives in the second ring with the poo thing. It's yeah, kind yeah. of like, you know, it's an issue, but it's not, you know, she will find a toilet. Yes, I yeah. will. I will. Yeah. yeah. Eventually. You will find a toilet. I will yeah. find it. I will. If it's like an emergency, <laughs> yeah. I will find a toilet. Okay. But I would prefer to like go home, you sure. know, and right. just have my own. Who wouldn't? Yeah, right? Who wouldn't? Maybe I'm imagine fine. there's someone that's like, I go I prefer out other toilets. to <laughs> poo. Broad Ideas is supported by Talkspace. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but you don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them or afford them? Try Talkspace by doing everything online. Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. When you've met your therapy goals or simply want to cancel, Talkspace has a simple cancellation process and will work with you to get a prorated refund or unused time if applicable. At Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing. It's the number one online therapy platform with licensed therapists in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, substance abuse, relationship issues, and much more. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash ideas. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash ideas to get $80 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash ideas. Broad Ideas is supported by Brooklinen. Is there a season better than fall? Nope. Just like fall. Brooklinen delivers crispness, the colors, and the comfort. Brooklinen was founded by husband and wife duo Rich and Vicky in 2014. Their mission is to provide their customers with hotel quality, award-winning luxury bedding. Brooklinen's internet famous sheets have over 100,000 five-star reviews, won multiple awards from industry experts, and are made with long staple cotton for longevity and softness. I love Brooklinen. Let me tell you, I am a big fan. Getting into my bed, getting into my sheets is so important to me. And ever since I switched to Brooklinen, I look forward to getting in bed every single night. Experience the difference for yourself and check out Brooklinen's new fall collection. Visit in-store or online at brooklinen.com and use code BROAD for $20 off your online order of $100 or more. That's B-R-O-O-K-L-I-N-E-N.com, promo code BROAD for $20 off. Yeah, no, I've told my I husband mean, to go, what do you think about this? So uh, if you're going to take a bath, yeah. right? And your husband needs to go to the bathroom. No. I think that that's bullshit. <laughs> I mean, think, while you're oh. in the bath? No, but right like before. he wants to go before and yeah. you want to no. take a bath. Oh, no. Unacceptable. No. I unacceptable. I think it's not cool. No. I take a shit but, or uh, something. But, right. Yeah, I would, yeah, I would no, be no. like, go down, go to, go go to, go to go out, bathroom. go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, go, go to, down the yeah. street. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I don't know. I think some guys are just like, well, well I need to go to the bathroom. And then you can take a bath afterwards. Yeah, no, but that's, that's like, disgusting. That's disgusting. It's rude. But what it's if like, you can't I don't want to smell that. Then there's can, not another there's bathroom? Not another bathroom? saying there's not yeah. another bathroom as an option? I do have other bathrooms. I knew you did. I knew you got more than You're one like bathroom just, in you. You look like a girl <laughs> that has two bathrooms. Yeah, my like mom something's not. used to call it the gas station. Well, when she was young, <laughs> she, she would get... call the gas station the gas station? No. She would get nervous and like if she was on a date or whatever, she'd be like, I have to go to the gas station and get, and she'd go to the gas station mm. and poop. And so <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so she would do that. And then Could I remember I came station? to her house one day and <laughs> poor her- guy at the gas station's like, there she is again. <laughs> <laughs> Take a there is that one. And there then it I is. Came to her house and her boyfriend, like her boyfriend at the time, I was like, where's my mom? He's like, in the gas station <laughs> and pointed to the other and bathroom. Like, mm-hmm. And they started calling the other bathroom the gas station. Okay. What about if you're on your first trip with like the oh, guy you're dating we, yes. and you have to go take a shit? What do you do <laughs> if you're in the hotel room? You know, you guys are guys, sharing a room. You leave. You no, leave and you go to the lobby bathroom, right? Yeah. Does this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> first, Listen, first vacation with a dude, yeah, you're like, well, it's been, look, it's been 16 years. So, okay. So I have to like really think yes. about it. Like what like I would do first, now. This is what I would okay. do. Firstly, I don't poo that much. Like, it's not like I would well, have a mid I wouldn't have a mid afternoon. Coffee? Yeah, she doesn't even no. pee. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink coffee, but I don't like have a mid. Like, people have mid afternoon poos. That doesn't happen to me. It's a first. It's in the morning. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I wake up. It's pretty regular. That's pretty much it for the day. If I'm a twofer, it's probably at night, and it's not. Like, I don't have like a <laughs> random like. Oh, it's four thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> uh, my stomach's getting a little queasy. Like, I don't like randomly like drive <laughs> home going gotta go poo. <laughs> <laughs> like it never happens to me. It's always in the morning. So I wake okay. up. I'm like, oh, it's time. So if somebody <laughs> else is in the room, firstly, I would put paper down so you don't have okay. to hear it, right? right. So it's not a big like plop. So that's cool. And then the minute it comes out, you flush it straight away. Yes. Flush it I'm straight away. No. It's even, not even in the I, air. But, it's no, like literally there for two seconds. Immediately, it falls you flush. You but well, some and then, and then you out. can like, you know, I have right. people perfumes. So no, no, perfume. I would go oh, to that no, hotel I'm not saying lobby. I would do it. I'm just yeah. saying no yeah. matter why. And you flush mm-hmm. them in a second. The only yes. issue with that is sometimes, and has caught mm-hmm. me off guard, is when you end up wiping, sometimes that second flush doesn't doesn't flush. Yeah. So and then, then you've you got to you notice that. Yes. No, you're trying to flush it and that like you're yeah. trying to fling it. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not going down. It's just going. And you're like, oh my God. Now like there's all the toilet again. paper <laughs> and it's like smudged and you're like. <laughs> and you're like, oh my God. And then you have to wait for the girl yeah, to yeah. stop. And then you press it again. Yeah. And then at this point, the guy's like, what is she doing in there? <laughs> that is the issue, though. No, you're trying know to hide. Yes. Doing in there. But they no, know if you're leaving to go to the more like, than one side. Yeah, and it's done. like a multiple flusher. But but the guy has seen like all your bits at that point. No, if you're staying over. Not necessarily. Like, but, if first first but if you're staying at a first vacation, but if you're staying at a first vacation, you've seen everything but, in a hotel. If you can hold it in a hotel, this is what I suggest. Okay. Now listen, I'm not guaranteeing that you'll get it all out. on this excursion. But <laughs> you're at the restaurant, you go like you're going to go pee and you get as much out as you can. But in the time slot, sometimes you don't, especially pee. if you're traveling. Yeah, you have, yeah. To, like, you have to like get it it's out. It's a little constipated. It's like, well, right. Yeah. Then you don't have to worry because it's not coming out. <laughs> and you're not, but you, you just get like a shit. little rabbit turd. You know, this little like, <laughs> <laughs> I've always, I've Googled many times, like, what does a rabbit turd mean? Like, and they're just like, you're dehydrated. And I was like, Oh, okay. You know, like it's a little bit that comes out. Damn it. And it's hard. And I you're found just like a random rabbit turd on my couch yesterday. <gasps> from from you. Wait, I you don't know. You guys. Do you want to explain? It was either from my child or a do- my Hold dog. Or, or your like, husband. I have no idea. explain something to you no. ladies. <laughs> Olivia's house. Oh. That's random shit that happens. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> They're potty training. Oh, oh potty training. There um, the dog shits everywhere. The child, child shits the everywhere. Shit everywhere. <laughs> the dog will go to the bathroom anywhere. Not in the house. How big, is the, the how big is the dog? She pees on the bed. She <laughs> well, doesn't like, shit on the bed. It's fine. I would rather, I would rather I'd shit honestly rather pee. shit anywhere because normally they're not mushy and you pick it yeah, up. Normally. And there's like a little bit of a smudge and that's fine. Yeah, no, pee know, is a whole know, other I know. story. It's a thing. Pee is it's like, it's an ish. Like when my, my dog kid pees pee through. I, it happens, We're right? We're getting out of trained. F that. Nope. Right. Girl. Your new puppy, you need to. Yes. yes. Yeah. Peeing on the bed. Is you, no she's untrained. Well. She's untrained. Her dog. What type of dog? French bulldog. Oh. Has she, did she ever go to training puppy school? Yeah. 
She okay. went to she went to boot camp. She so went to maybe, training. So like maybe there's no hope, like for us. She's she, we're putting this her dog. on CBD, and it's oh, helping her anxiety. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think she gets jealous of the kids? No, like she's it's like obsessed a with the kid. I don't know she's what it is. Insane. I once put a diaper on my dog and it ended terribly because I just shit in the diaper. And, then and it to- smudges their whole yeah. No! <laughs> I was like, this is genius. And I was like, oh my God, this is the worst invention. Oh no. I had yeah. to put a diaper on my dog before she was fixed because she had got her period. I remember. That's true. So did I. Oh, yeah. 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 It's like it's monthly. Thing. Is it? Monthly oh, well, she only had it once and then she was fixed. <gasps> yeah, okay, they were like, good. I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. Well, they say to wait one, so one back cycle. To Olivia, cycle. So back to Olivia and shitting every like <laughs> <laughs> things shitting everywhere. Rachel came over the other day uh-huh. and it was it was a shit storm. It was in a literal shit storm. Literal. Like a literal shit uh, I feel bad for you. It's my awesome. son. I've never seen the- that much <gasps> shit come out of any person. <laughs> And he is a tiny four-year-old. Okay. Oh, I remember. So, yeah, we, yeah. We, we potty trained out second <laughs> yeah, when she was two insane. because of the pandemic, oh, which is great. great. Mm-hmm. So we literally just took her clothes off for a week and a half. We couldn't leave the house anyway. And yeah. she like pooped every... Well, you can't leave the house. The minute you leave the house when you're right. potty training, it's an issue. No. And it's hard when you have a life and when they're older and they've got things to do. So two years old, took everything off. And within a week, she was potty trained. But until the first couple of times out and she was on the slide and just mm. diarrhea down oh. the hall from the top to the oh, bottom. No. Like just the whole oh, thing. No. And I watched oh. it in slow motion. I was like, no. <laughs> and then I looked at Sean and I was like, you're up, buddy. And I just <laughs> peaced out with my eight-year-old. I was like, I'm oh, out. Oh my God. Oh, no. yeah. Did God, you have no. anxiety during potty training? The night potty training like I waited on that we waited. longer than the regular because yeah, she just stopped yeah, yeah. we did because three you right. don't want to deal with them right. wetting the bed because um, it's you just have to wait pull-ups. until you just have to wait until my dry. son yeah. still wears pull-ups to bed but that's okay he's four yeah he's so and you're looking at me <laughs> <laughs> no I'm looking at you like should I not be saying that out loud <laughs> no I think it's a medical condition no 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 for four firstly no, no, no. firstly no. boys seven are- Oh yeah, then maybe it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I was like my four-year-old. You know, she's, she's never four. You're like oh. no, no. I was, four, like, I was no. like, it's normal. The seven-year-old. Well, well, my but, husband says it's a could be classified. There's some word for it. Mm. And my husband's a doctor, so yeah. it could be connected with sleep apnea. So oh. we're like, we need Anxiety to get him checked because or... he doesn't wake up from it. He doesn't wake up from it. Gotcha. Oh. Does he pee before he goes to bed? Just, yes. Does he? Uh, sometimes is it dry? Listen to me. I'm like, sound like I'm going to, does it sound like, it is a dry when he wakes up the, the Oh, the diaper. I mean, the pull up. Is it sometimes? Dry? Yeah, sometimes. You have to wait till it's consistently dry, dry for like yeah. a week to two weeks to go yeah, without so it. Yeah, so we stopped giving him water at a certain time. We make him mm-hmm. go pee. We do yeah. all of those things. He does not wake up from it. I don't know. Keep the pull-ups so if it's the, there's still lick, you know what wetness there. I, would I just keep, keep him mental. in pull-ups, yeah. and, and and everyone's like, well, he's gonna be old and he's gonna be made fun of. He doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't care. like he, he doesn't rocks give up. He's he's like, like, he he just like, like yes. we'll do like big sleepovers. He'll sleep here. You know, my daughter's around. Yeah. He's just rocking his pull-up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like doesn't no give problem. A fuck. <laughs> Does not question. What do you? Because I didn't think I would be like this in my stance on it. But what do you think about sleepovers? Because I have what very yes. So I don't. My kids don't have sleep sleepovers and they probably won't i'm like kids at your house or them going to the house they can come to our house Mm. right happy for them to come to our house but i read a statistic a very high percentage of girls who are sexually um abused are are during sleepovers because firstly you think but here's the thing you think you know the cup which you do but Mm. you don't know the stepbrother you don't know the uncle who might be coming over you don't know there's so many other people that could be coming in and out mm-hmm. of a family that you go okay well I know the husband I trust the husband we think which most of the time you do and there's most of my friends husbands I definitely would trust mm-hmm. but there's other things that go on you know and and I've heard it's a very high percentage and and it's normally that age range between nine and I think it's 15. Like nine and fifteen. Oh my! So I'm against sleepovers. To yeah. Be honest. So okay. I, I, and I've had this argument with other friends that think I'm insane. I don't. Mm. Yeah. There's a couple of people that I am okay with it. Mm-hmm. Like me, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but Rachel's Rachel, by herself, like right? Yeah. When yeah, but she's, she's also my family. Yeah. So it's like it's not like you have yeah. like a random person or a guy coming yeah. in. It's like, you you know what I mean? It's you. There's only a couple of revolving men. No, there's a couple people. 
honestly, my kids have never once done a sleepover without me except at Rachel's house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like one. And I'm I would not be okay comfortable with. with them doing it. You know, my there's daughter like, doesn't want to sleep out. Like she, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, and I was like that too as a kid. That's the thing is, and, and the person I was arguing with, she was like, well, what if when he makes friends, they're going to want to have sleepovers? I'm mm-hmm. like, that's great. They can sleep at my house. Like, especially families like you make at school and you mm-hmm. think, I, you don't know people. Yeah. And I feel very protective of my children in that way, for sure. It's, and it's, I don't gosh, even, you know, my I parents too. About that. Oh, oh really? yeah. Well, no, that's mm-hmm. not true. It's mm-hmm. not true that I haven't thought about it, but mm-hmm. maybe because my daughter doesn't want to sleep out. And you're really but, close with the people you would ever consider oh, doing yeah. that but, but with. Most of, but most, unfortunately, when, when you happens. really like open it up, it's mm-hmm. most of these things happen with people that you know. Yeah, it's not random people. It's right. people that are in your inner circle and the pe- like even like the piano teacher, you know, you just it's really yeah. it's really scary and it's normally people that the that your children trust. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because that's how sort of, you know, abusers. They groom more, them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's a thing. It's a thing. And it, it, we were just talking about that this weekend. Like, I didn't even know there was a thing called grooming. Like, mm-hmm. that they, like not really, that they actually yeah, that it was take, a term like Yeah, right. that they take time and effort warming them up into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That they're grooming I them agree. for I that fully, moment. Right. Like, that freaks me out. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. You know, really I'm like, that is. Yeah petrifying and it could be like a teacher or somebody mm-hmm. close to them and you have no idea that's why i would never let them spend alone time with right no. like and my children <laughs> you know any males my ever. head yeah. my, you're gonna i mean I don't. i'm so sorry all these do like, you feel like that about females too or is it just males for you because for me with females i don't feel that i don't at feel all. it as much because i think like statistically it's less likely but yeah. is it likely absolutely but even my five-year-old now, we have this mantra that we have been taught to teach her, mm. which might seem like a lot considering her age, but she knows verbatim how to say, do not touch my breast vagina or um, or um, butt area because I need to, because I am too young and I need to give you consent. I can give you a hug because I'm only old enough to do that. That was a script that I, I learned from a therapist that said, you need to teach mm. your kids because what Oof. happens is they don't know. Mm. And she's very, she knows it. And yeah. we've, we've, she knows it. And we've mentioned it a few times and she will repeat it back to us because even though she's almost five, now she knows what those parts are. When we go, your pee pee and your poo poo. She never use never those, use those terms. Yeah, she needs to know true. that that is from yeah. dad. And if anyone ever came up to her and touched her inappropriately, she would say Mm -hmm. no, because she knows that is my, I'm not old enough to do that. I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, and I think it starts really young and it's really scary. But if you empower your kids to know what these body parts are and what makes them feel uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. then they'll be able to vocalize it. But if, if I never taught her that, she'd be like, what is, what is going on? Like, are we playing? Like she wouldn't really know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the scary mm -hmm. part. Mm -hmm. And for me, like I do find myself shutting off and wanting to avoid it. Like and be like, well, I don't even want to bring that into his consciousness or whatever. That's, but I you know, have, I, right? I, I struggle with that will. too. Because and you don't do no. it scary. You don't make it scary. You just right. be like, hey, mm-hmm. sometimes, like, not sometimes. If this ever happens, right. this is what you do. This is. And she even says, you know, it's funny. Like my my mom gave her this big hug recently, and she was like, no, I don't feel like a hug right now. And my mom was like a little offended by it, mm-hmm. but then she kind of go over it. But she was like, I just don't feel like it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I was really proud of my five-year-old for be able to like notice when she didn't feel like it in that moment. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? And so like she can be like, but she loves my mom. She's a little over her. But like she just was feeling like yeah, she just tired like or hug. whatever yeah. it was. Like, you know. Yeah, my daughter, you know, recently has stopped wanting to kiss her parents on the lips. Same. Mm-hmm. So same, she's same, like same, not… Same. Down Feeling for it. it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's a bummer, mm-hmm. but I'm not like, you have to kiss me right now. And I'm mm-hmm. like, it's, it's a your bummer. choice. It's if your you choice. don't want yeah. to, you know, I totally get it. Mm-hmm. And, and it's weird, the lip kissing thing, because David Beckham had a photo, him kissing his daughter at the time. He was probably Harper. like yes. 10 or 11. He got mm-hmm. such flack for it. See, I don't think that's right. I don't you think that's right. You know who else got flack? Coca, um, Ice-T's oh, yeah. wife. Co- she always gets so much I flack I know, her daughter was kissing her. I was like, 
her daughter kisses her. Right. Like people were like, she's yeah. like on her and kissing her, and you're like, it's her mom. It's her, it's her mom. mom. I know. I think it's because a lot of these people don't have. You know, when you have a child, you know how up in their grill you get. Like you're kissing their face yes. and they're mm-hmm. you're biting their little shoulders and like because they're babies, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like a it's a maternal thing. You're right. constantly on them and kissing them and touching them, and then at some point they move away from that. Mm-hmm. But some kids still are connected to that. Those those feelings, mm-hmm. right? Of like holding and being held and loved yeah. on. Yeah. But I do notice too, you have to retrain like family members, especially like That's old true. school family yeah. members about it because they'll say, oh, come give grandpa a hug I know. or grandma a right. hug, you know? And it's sometimes, you know, you, but you're like, no, but she doesn't feel like that. So she shouldn't have to do that because and they she do has get body offended. autonomy. Yeah, they do, yes. of course. Right? We yeah. have to do it. So my brother's living with us right now mm-hmm. and he has to advocate for his own body all the time <laughs> <laughs> because I have two sons that are and they just jump on him. Buck they're just, wild. Yeah. yeah. They're buck wild and they love to be naked and they yeah. love to twerk and they the love same. to- same. I got them too. <laughs> and he'll say to them, what you're doing makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't like it when you touch my body like that. Yeah. Because they'll come up to him. And say, yeah. He doesn't like it because yeah. it makes him feel uncomfortable. He's like, mm-hmm. don't rub your butt on me. I know. You know? And so I've had my to kids. be like, your yeah. your private parts, you do not touch other people with them. You don't touch other people's private parts and you don't let them touch yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, like this. You know it's, hard, I mean? though, to, it's hard though to like it's have hard, those conversations yeah. without making them feel ashamed. Mm, I know. Right? And be like. Right. It's all this. You want them to be, you know, free and mm-hmm. all of it. And, There's and, no shame on their face. Oh, They're my just kids like, are naked. Like the, literally, like we have to tell them, do not take your clothes off because we're about to leave. Because, yep. you know, like when you go into the house, for, we go into the house for like not even like a millisecond and like they're butt naked. <laughs> yeah. What is that with kids? They love it. I mean, it's like their freedom, right? That's they're true. just like, take it all I off. I mean, I'm Shut butt it. naked because I love to have no- <laughs> But I think too, it's like the household because like the like my husband and I and our daughter, like we, we don't have any shame in our bodies like That's in true. that way. So if we're naked, we're naked. It, no one even looks twice. You know, it's like we'll have a conversation. You know, and you know whatever. Like kind of yeah, goes like, on. We'll have dinner. Yeah, we'll have dinner. But I'm cooking in the yeah, kitchen. Yeah, we'll have yeah, neighbors over. Yeah. Oil <laughs> splashing all over my titties. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm I mean, over come on tonight. In. Come on over. Did to you live in a naked family though? Nope. I lived in a, the complete opposite. Really? Yes, complete opposite. My parents were very conservative with that. We never talked about sex. Did you ever sex. see your dad naked? No. Your mom naked? Mom, yes. Like, mom, yes. Like, mom, yes. Go to the, yeah. help us, like, go to the bathroom and stuff like that. Yes, mom, yes. And she would, like, if she took a bath, like, we, yeah. but it was never, like, you know, we never talked about sex. We were never kind yeah. of, like, out in the open. So I think, and my husband was the same way. He came from a very similar mm-hmm. background in that way. So I think for us, it's kind of like we don't want our daughter to feel like she has to be ashamed of her right. body. Do you yeah. think there's an age where you would consider it? In a pro, or I don't even know the like, word for oh, it. I've been for wondering that. Her, the for, daughter to like take a bath with her dad. I think the I dad, mean, and I don't know if this yeah. is right or wrong, but I think the dad thing is different than the mom thing. And I don't know yeah. why, because like if, if my mom a, was in a bath even now, she's 75. I If it was a big bath, I'd just jump in there. Right. Like it's, I wouldn't jump in with my dad. No. <laughs> right, right, like, right. I would feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> but my creepy. mom, yeah. like yeah. I'd just be like chatting away. Like yeah. it just feel very, very normal. Mm. Um, so like my eldest daughter, I don't feel like there's an issue. Like we, I wash her hair. Sometimes it's easier when I'm in the shower too. Yeah, Obviously, my youngest is four, but mm-hmm. but my husband wouldn't shower with her now. No, how old is she? So. Your oldest? She's nine. Nine, and mm-hmm. he wouldn't shower mm-hmm. with her now. Mm-hmm. I don't same, know yeah. what age it mm-hmm. is. I don't know. He would shower with my four year old probably to wash her hair if he needed yeah. to, like if she walked in or anything like that. I think I would say around six. Like what's out of the toddler right? stage? Yeah, nine is, kind of, nine is creep into yeah, preteen. Like yeah. they know enough to be looking. Yes. I feel like, like even Elliot is seven. I am, I change in front of him every mm-hmm. day. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm always yeah, changing and mom running is, around. I feel and like, like the mom is different. Know? I don't right. know. Well, here's, it's like if friends are over, you know, right. and if I'm changing, like, are you free? Or that's weird. Like, you know what I mean? Like, their friends, friends? If yeah. I'm, no, I oh, would not do it in front of their friends. Well, not no. like you're not like getting in the shower while <laughs> no. they're standing I mean, there. A you baby, know? sure. Like it's, I I would feel uncomfortable bathing two kids Phoenix's age now. I wouldn't. I wouldn't you get know. in a bath with anybody. No, 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 else. no, 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 no
Phoenix, because Phoenix takes a bath or shower, and if right. two of her friends got in the shower at nine, I would not, I don't know, I would feel inappropriate. Like if they were boys or girls, or I it doesn't matter? I think so. You- like, would you feel comfortable Phoenix getting in with Bray and showering? I mean, maybe. I, may, I think maybe. if it's like a battle I maybe feel, that would I be, would be fine. Okay. Like, yeah, he, yeah I think friends I'd be Because okay. if I would yeah. be okay with you bathing Phoenix, then yeah, I'd probably I, feel comfortable bathing Bray. Yeah, yeah. I think when, they, when they're that little still with the I kids. I think maybe puberty. I yeah. I think puberty, it's when, yeah. well, I think being with the opposite sex is different. Like mm-hmm. for sure. Friends right. being in a bath together until they're, right. I mean, I remember my friend Deanna and I would take baths together until we were like, 22. <laughs> yeah, she's like, yeah. I would You're probably like, now. I honestly have some people in my life that I could yeah. take a shower with now. Oh, Leah and I have showered. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have no yeah. problem. Our, like, our, our no other best friend. We're it. like, yeah, we'll just yeah. shower. shower. Like, yeah, that is not, that's it's not a, sexual. It's no. not sexual no. at all. <laughs> Until it becomes sexual. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. So it's but like, da- dads, I'm just like, I wouldn't want dads bathing my children. No. <laughs> like ever, so but ever, random dads. ever, right? Ever, right? Random dads. Yeah. Random random dads. dads straight what straight I mean, like, because you know how you like bathe all Briar's friends or like yeah. put them in the shower together. Sure. I wouldn't feel comfortable with a dad doing that with my child. Do you get with what I mean? your child's like, friends or your child? Like your like if, <laughs> what if, are you talking like about? if if if. <laughs> Like if, if he, my yeah. friends were, if Elliot and uh-huh. and his friends were playing at Tamman's and her husband was going to give them all a shower. Yeah, my husband, my husband. Um, I would feel weird per- about so, that. So my four-year-old has, uh, five-year-old, four and a half-year-old has sleepovers at our house because mm-hmm. there's two girls that like to come over and my husband will ask me to sh- bath them. Right. Yeah. Because right. he thinks it's appropriate for them. Their parents, not that makes you know sense. what I mean, like mm-hmm. just to make them to feel comfortable and stuff That's like right. that. Yeah, and That's I, what I would mean. Bat, I would shower them and bring right. them. Right, the kids. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay, what about babysitters though? Because a lot of young men and boys babysit. So like, right. how Who would you feel people? about a male? <laughs> they have me well, it's funny. Now, it's like <laughs> we were t- we were traveling last summer and we we're staying with some friends on the East Coast and. They, you know, we needed a babysitter for like the night we were going out for dinner and everything. And she, the the mom was like, oh, we've got this amazing guy who used to babysit our kids, mm. you know, because she had a boy and a girl. And she's like, he's great. He's so responsible. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it because I felt like. You're, even your though, child is nine though. It's different yeah, than a four-year-old. It's different than a four-year-old, yeah. but still, like, I don't know. I didn't know him, A. No. But she spoke very highly of him, said mm-hmm. he was great. Um, but I just, there was something in me that I just couldn't do it. And maybe, maybe that's, mm. like, sexism on my part that I'm saying, like, I would feel uncomfortable with a boy baby swimming It's also statistically, girl. you know? Like, you just gotta look it at, is like, statistic. statistically. It's statistically, it what is. What is the reality? Is. And the reality is it happens more with men than women. Like, mm-hmm. it just is statistically. It just mm-hmm. is fact. Right, right. I wouldn't so, let a male babysit babysit mm-hmm. um, that I didn't know bathe my child. No, right. no, I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't. No. Right. no way. I'd be like, no thanks. If he was going to stay with them, and they were all going to watch a mo- movie, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to lie, it still would make right? me feel mm-hmm. a little weird. Totally. Mm-hmm. Same. And it's not like I want to trust guys in that mm-hmm. way, but if you look at the statistics, like. Whose comfort am I putting first is right, the yeah. question I like to ask myself. Right. And I feel like that would be me people pleasing mm-hmm. and me going along with something that if I were to be microscopically honest, I wouldn't be comfortable. But with. also you got to think about, you know, I said to my husband, I was like, you know, every time I walk to my car at night in America or maybe not as much in, in Australia, but a lot of places, I'm always thinking someone might attack me. <laughs> well, you're also thinking you're going to get poisoned. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I do have some, like, There's a lot a of issues. <laughs> but like, don't you always, you're always on guard yeah. when you're walking alone that you might be attacked or assault, mm-hmm. like sexually assaulted. Mm-hmm. That's really sad that we have to feel like that. I'm mm-hmm. constant. And I said, do you walk to your car and think someone might be like, in and it? And attack yeah. you? Mm-hmm. And he's like, absolutely not. I never <laughs> think that. And I'm like, Wow. Yeah, but also, why would they? They've never been like, fed yeah, that narrative, Like, yeah, I was like, do I need right? pepper That's... spray? Do I need? Yeah. And it's like, I hope at some point, like, that feeling can change because I want my girls to, you know, and, and my husband is so wonderful. Like, he's so great. And he's he's the helper. He's never, mm-hmm. he's never hurt anyone in his life. But it's weird that, like, I think that every time mm-hmm. I walk to my car. 
Well, there's also a lot that happens. Like right now, right? Yeah. You leave. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> dated little She's house like, on the hill. Did you guys poison my glass of water? Yeah, but too? is it just at night? <laughs> is it in the daytime too? <laughs> Not in the day. I, I would say if I'm alone in a parking lot, definitely mm. at night. Oh hell! Um, don't you always Wait, like every you're time, always? Yeah. Thinking, I don't think I'm ever alone in a parking lot at night. <laughs> no, I don't even do that no. anymore. Yeah. No, you I can't. Just, but if you ever walked yeah. your car at night, if you ever had to, aren't you always? I get scared to walk to my kitchen at night in the house. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> definitely. She stays, you stay in this room. I literally Never leave. do not leave the room. But She's I, like, so I got a mini fridge. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have thought about I hope it. The generations that we raise will be these, like, you know, I, I, I read this thing about, like, you know, guys get aggressive because they have been taught that, like, they can't really be emotional and feel and go through, you know, so they bottle it all up. And a lot of that aggression comes from that. And I hope we raise the generations to be like your sons to like really understand where their emotions come from and like Mm -hmm. be able to talk about things and not feel so stifled and, Mm. right. And like stuck, you know? Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's, it's just so interesting, you know? And I, and I think to, to some extent, I've done a disservice to my kid with like, Hmm. I'm not exposing her to all these, but she's Hmm. very sensitive. So like it might create anxiety or fears Mm -hmm. or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's kind of like really picking and choosing the most important things and, and doing that. And like what you taught your daughter to say at five, which is Mm -hmm. impressive. I'm like, well, it might be time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's obviously aware and like, no. You know, but if but they no, don't learn it from you, they'll learn it from she, someone. But like else. I said, like she doesn't want to get a bad and first she's, draft. Right. stands firm on it. Right. She doesn't fold to pressure. You know what I no, mean? No, like, mm-hmm. But so, like even the sex topic, right? To Talking to your kids about sex, we had a sex therapist on, like a child sex therapist, um, to talk, like teaching us what to mm-hmm. say to I our think kids. we need her. And, yes. and yeah. the problem is if you at this age, especially by nine, if you haven't taught them about sex, they say most likely they've heard about it from someone yeah. else. Mm-hmm. And then they get a bad first draft. Right. And then yeah. when they get a bad first draft, whatever you say doesn't really change what they've already heard. Mm-hmm. And so like it's really important to be the first person to the table when it comes to these right. big mm-hmm. subjects. Total because sense. When we avoid them, which mm. is so it feels easy at the time, it actually isn't easier in the long run. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To be honest, I'm more like paranoid of her seeing like a lot of violence on TV, mm. oh, killings, yeah. murder, oh, yeah. like that kind of stuff. I mean, she's watched things like she loves Stranger Things and Wednesday, and she watches things that are kind of, you know, still within her age range, I would say. And she has seen the kissing and like, I, you know, same sex kissing. It's not that big of a deal. Mm. To her because we have, you know, one of my best friends is gay. You know, I mean, we just, she's always been around gay Mm -hmm. people. One of our aunts is gay, you know. So it's like not a big deal in that way. But I do think we do try to shield her a bit from like, a lot of the violence, oh, like yeah, on TV, yeah. you know, because yeah, that's, sex is not the problem. No, right. once you know my I daughter mean? realized right. that like people can get murdered, she was right. like having nightmares every single night, like right. waking right. up. You know what I mean? And it's like that's the thing. It's like, what do you guard them from? What what's useful? You know, all of it. Yeah, it's a thing. It's a thing. It's my like, kids aren't yeah. guarded from the violence at all, be, at mm. all. and they beat each other up all day long. <laughs> all day long. It's like an MMA fight, it and is. you know. <laughs> I can only my win kids do too, and I have so two many girls. battles. <laughs> like my daughter has like a scratch mark down her. Like she oh, went to school. No. Like and I was like, "What happened?" She's like, "When and scratch me." <laughs> but I don't mind keeping my kids young. Like we're really we're we won't even let them watch Stranger Things. Like we're pretty. We don't do YouTube. Oh, we're very. We, we're, we're still on kids same. YouTube. Like yeah. I don't really don't care if I, I'm. If we talked about sex. Penis goes in a vagina. That's what we're supposed to say at this age. And you have a baby. That's really that's really it at this age. You don't need to talk about the pleasure part quite yet. Um, but I'm happy for her to not be aware of a lot of like the stuff. And she doesn't have a phone. We're not going to do that till 13. At least I'm going to try because mm-hmm. yeah, they really have studies about girls. They said that – what a doctor oh, – Dr. Um, Amen, who's a great doctor here, mm-hmm. said that – He's a psychiatrist. He said that 57% of young girls feel constantly sad. Mm-hmm. From what? looking from at their phones. Looking at their phones, right? Social, yeah. 57%. Oh my God. It needs to be stopped. I, I will do that. I mean, it's going to be the biggest battle, but I, know. Right. I don't care. But I, first of all, I told her 16. Yes. <laughs> but I also want to get one Instagram of Instagram she can they're get called, when she's no, out of there. They're oh. called dumb phones. Oh, oh I think that's what No, called. what is it? It's basically just call people. All you can do is call and text. That's great. That's no, good. social media. 
no internet, no anything. I'm like, great. I great. don't care. I'll do you that. can text your friends. Yeah. You I was going to call me when you need me. Right. Yeah. I know people right. that do watches as well. Yeah. But I'm like, I don't want her no. on no. social media. And certainly not social media. I mean, social media is a high school or more. After, I trust you know? her. Like, I don't even wise, I know it. she's not. No. But it's not even no. that you trust her. Like, these these weird guys can come into her DMs and all of a sudden uh, she thinks, Do your kids yeah. play Roblox? Yes. No. Mine does. Yours don't? Yours. Mine does. Well, it's mm-hmm. the biggest thing, right? Right. But she knows. She goes where other kids can, you know, join and try yeah. to play with yes. them and whatever. And, and it's I'm a like, thing that they all like to do. She Their does friends it with her best to... friends. And right. she mm-hmm. enjoys it. And on the weekend, you know, Saturday morning, if her right. friends are on, they can do it together. Mm-hmm. But anybody out there on Roblox can try to impersonate yeah. But she knows. You can turn that off, yep. though. You can. You can turn the feature off where people can talk to you. Yes, she mm-hmm. mine has a no yeah. chat. She has no chat right, on yes. there. I need to do that because maybe I, maybe that's it's like a me. hardcore rule of yes. mine. Yeah, I'm, and there mm-hmm. is guidelines there's, on that. I believe on what they can say. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. that but makes sense. I think there's a way to turn that aspect of it off. There okay. is. It's a pin you put in because we set yeah. that on hers because we were like, I don't know who. Like, if yeah. someone I don't wants want to you try talking to, to strangers. Luckily, my period. daughter gets so focused on what she's, she's not paying attention to anything. Right. Else. So like, if the someone's game. talking to her, she, there's no chance. I'm like, totally. Those, like, because we did, we did the, what's it called? The, the PlayStation, what is it? The PX, what the, Switch. Oh, the yeah. Switch. The Switch. We Nintendo. did that. Mm-hmm. Kids got aggressive. Really, really started getting, and you have one, you both have one. So mm. it's like, there's no, like we have two, so they got aggressive with each other. Right. Sure. And I felt like it had something to do with the, the game. So well, we we're really careful about video games. We'll let them do things like brush the, the hair or like yeah, the yeah, drawing yeah. games and stuff like that. But yes. I but I when they start playing games, they get really aggressive with each other. That mm. makes sense. Mm. Yeah. 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 My kids act like you yeah, it's I mean, <laughs> like, let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. I think it's Shepard a has a real future as an MMA fighter. <laughs> yeah. He my he favorite is <laughs> Uh, <laughs> the video she sent me their uh, first day of school they're so cute char- you know in front of the front door in their little yeah. clothes and their backpacks and her older son who is so sweet he's so tender he's so tender he went and he kisses his little brother on he's the punched head him. and Shepard turns around and it's like <laughs> What? <laughs> just like knocks him out. I mean, my two girls do that, so it's not just boys, right? Yeah, yeah. no, it's, it's just thing. what they do. It's you just know? what they do. Yeah, and I don't even. It doesn't even bother me because it's their form of bonding, mm-hmm. and I'm like, they're just bonding. They know, they're like bonding Shep- at the hospital. <laughs> yeah, but like Shepard <laughs> doesn't hit me. He doesn't hit other kids. He doesn't like. Mm-hmm. They're not taking it outside of the house. So yeah. I'm like, you know, yeah. it's not coming from anger. It's like. They're bear cubs. Right. They're and just yeah. like energy. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. right. They have to get that energy we out. Have you know, so much energy. So much energy. So and much I don't energy. think, you know, Lennon, my youngest, is going through um, like tantrums, big, 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 big feelings. And we were in Australia. And of course, she's like overwhelmed and exhausted and having these feelings. And like she'd have a tantrum. And I had people walk past and go, shh. Oh, no. <gasps> Hell. Almost no. lost my shit. And people who are listening who aren't parents, I understand. Like, it looks like the kid is being bad. But what it actually is, is a developmental milestone, which sounds weird. But they're meant to have these tantrums because it's a way for them to kind of feel out the world and, like, try to learn how to communicate. Mm. And it's actually best when they're having a tantrum is just to let them have the tantrum. Right. Mm. And then talk about it after the tantrums. We, we do a lot of breathing exercises mm-hmm. to try. But now, like, Lennon, my littlest one, is like, I'm trying to <laughs> breathe through <laughs> my tantrum. But instead of just getting angry, angry and being like, you're bad. You need to go to your room. I'm just like, if you need to take some time to calm down, I will be here and I love you. Mm -hmm. Ah! And like, Mm -hmm. obviously, if you're in a store, get them out of the store because you don't (laughs) want to disrupt people. If you're in a movie theater or whatever, Mm -hmm. like, of course, I'm just not letting our tantrum in front of people and disrupting their lives. But they're not being bad. They Mm -hmm. need us to help them and mold them and give them guidance and be their like steadfast heroes rather than just being like, your feelings are too big, you know, and yeah. you're in trouble and go to your room. Like, that's just so archaic. Right? It is archaic. Oh, yeah. It just yeah. is. Yeah. The thing is, this is what's hard for me. And tell me if you experience that is we're working with a behavioral specialist right now because Shepard, my youngest, hmm. has behavior issues due to being, what's the word? Neurodivergent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's got, you know, learning disabilities and all mm-hmm. that stuff. And so he's completely different than a typical kid. Mm-hmm. So when he acts out and is like, he he will get mean. He can be mean and mm-hmm. be like, you're rude. I don't, you know, whatever. <laughs> his favorite. Yeah. You're rude. You're rude. Oh. And like, Ur, and he'll growl at you and all mm-hmm. this stuff. And I'll be like, Shepard. And I 
will talk to him in any way, shape or form. And the behavioralist is like, see that you're enforcing it. Mm. I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I'm not supposed to do anything. And no. she's like, I know it feels really hard for you right? to to let him do that. I'm like, well, it feels hard because I feel like I need to take care of the people around mm. and you let feel them embar- know. It's embarrassing. Feel embarrassed. Right. Right. And it's like, I feel like I need to let them know. I know what he's doing is out of control. Mm-hmm. And she's like, so what I would or suggest. Perceived out of- right. Or perceived. Right. 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 She's like, what I would do is I would heads up the people around. Mm -hmm. And be like, hey, guys, we're doing this thing. I want you to know I'm not unaware of him screaming or tantruming. We're well aware of it, but we're we're making a really concerted effort effort effort. to to not not react. Like, and shame. Is that right? Right. To not give him anything, anything, whether it's positive or negative, because what you're doing is you're enforcing it. Mm -hmm. So she's like, it's it's all about pivoting mm-hmm. right pivot pivot and that's when you're having anxiety it's so good it's to so like hard change though. the change the right. track yeah and for it's me really the hard. hardest is like the people around I, I don't want them to think I'm just like yeah go ahead and it's more out you uh, know out trigger right. from yeah. the actual tantrum because we she had a my youngest had a tantrum at the monkey forest right but like a huge and it's hot and we're in a line and everyone's looking and she's like I hate you screaming right and my first thing is I felt so triggered because firstly I'm also was on TV there. So like some people recognize me from that and they're like, oh, there's that Tamman, like her kids out. So that's an even more embarrassing. And then everyone's looking and then they're looking at me and I feel so bad. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to let other people's opinions of me right now right. dictate yeah. this situation. Right. And I'm going to do what's right for my kid. I got her out of there. Mm-hmm. And then I got her in a situation, like an area where she could tantrum it out. We calmed our bodies down. Mm-hmm. And then I spoke to her and we tried to solve the problem different when they're nine, like they have more of an understanding about consequences Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. solutions. But when they're four, you hitting or throwing a kid in a corner or getting angry is not going to do any Mm -hmm. good for a four-year-old. No. What do you guys think about people who discipline your kids? Like it could be a stranger. I can't stand it. Somebody that's like, shh, or you don't do that. Or you be quiet. Like A stranger? Yeah, like a stranger. Like a family family member. Like I start to like boil inside. Even a family. I can't even do it if a family member or a friend. Mm. I have a friend who like gives my girls lessons and mm. I, I just can't stand it. unless it's a I'm good a, lesson Briar mm. does something and Olivia is like Briar like and not that I, that's never happened it's never happened <laughs> yeah, <she's> like, <laughs> but like if my but, best friend who like have known her since birth and like and has the same you know, values know, yeah and they'd yeah. be like hey I'd be like absolutely tell her if she's out but if it's line, like you know? a mom from school let's say or that's something different. another mom from school that's like oh you need to or I never do talking that. to your kid being like shh it's you know, hard this. you can't ever really tell a yeah. mother or another parent right. something about their own child it's just a very like sensitive. Mm-hmm. And again, you don't have the context. You don't right. know like yeah. a child right. might have mm-hmm. autism. Mm-hmm. Like I looked, my friend's kid has autism and loses his mind, right. and like per- that to other people's perceived mm-hmm. as a bad kid. Right, mm-hmm. right. Can't control himself. Phys- like literally can't control his right. impulses. Right, mm-hmm. right. And we just don't know someone else's situation. My advice is do not parent someone else's kid. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though, that happened this weekend. Mm-hmm. I was at um, a family camping trip. Okay. And Shepard, who we, you know, it's so hard not knowing the word to really like encompass his behavior. It's, it's similar to autism, Mm. but it's not right. Mm. So it's different. He learns completely different. He's not typical. Mm -hmm. And um, one of our family members, we were in their home and one of the family members, he did something and he said, not in my house and you will do X, Y, and Z. And you know what? Mm. I liked it mm. because I, mm. I thought this is diversity. Mm-hmm. This is him experiencing th- this person's home, mm-hmm. the way they operate, the way they do it. And I, I, I really appreciated it. And I sat back and thought, let's see if he does it. And Shepard did it. <gasps> and because I was in her like, house, oh. she can't put any discipline. But, it, <laughs> you know I mean? but no, but if it's I someone else's rest- house and there's someone stuff, else's then I house. understand that. But but it's different to say, don't do this in my house because these are my things. Right. And that is totally acceptable. Yeah. But it's different than disciplining your kid 
saying, now, listen, you need to control your body. Right. There's a difference in like, yeah, like right. if you're saying, don't, I don't like this in my mm-hmm. house because these are my things and they're special to me and I would like you to not ruin them. Mm-hmm. Totally acceptable. But if it, if the person was like, hey, I want to let you know something. Yelling is, it's just not like, it's not attractive. Like it's not a, it's not a good trait to have. Then, then they're, oh, no, no, do you no, know no, what I mean? No. Then yeah, they're trying different. to discipline. Then attacking like the, the personal care person's character, character of the child. Yeah. But yeah, if, so, if she's breaking someone else's stuff, then absolutely tell discipline, her. Discipline, right? Do right. not, yep. do not break or my stuff. Or even rules. Yeah. Just yeah. like yeah. when you're in my house, like he was just, I kind of respected it. Yeah, rules I'm like, are he's great. He's not pussyfooting. Yeah. He's like, great. in my house, we sit down when we eat and we say please and thank you. That's right. And I'm going, I'm going, my kid doesn't she's even like, understand. No, she's like, this my household, they don't even know what that means. <laughs> yeah, they do. But 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 I agree, I agree but, with you when it's someone else's rules, but yeah. they're not talking about your kid's behavior. Meaning right. by they're right. not saying like it's their own boundaries. When you tantrum, that's just not good. Like it's not good. Like they're not that's yeah. not down with. I'm not down yeah. with that. No. Not yeah. down with that. Yeah. yeah. No. But it was kind of cool to see someone else enforce their yeah. rules and mm-hmm. watch him comply. I was yeah. like, what? You're like, who I take shoes off in my house. I don't care yeah. who you are. If you're the queen of Sheba, I'm like, you take your shoes off. Yeah, take them. Oh, I'm yeah, not dealing with sure. your, I'm going to give you another thing. There's like oh, no. feces. There's, there's oh, I saw a special. Oh, yeah. I'm going to take my shoes off. There, there is bacteria. I saw a special on the and, bacteria. And it's yeah. 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 like you put shoes in someone else's. dirtier than a toilet. It's so dirty. Because they clean toilets and you don't clean the floors like that. You don't clean the bottom of your shoes. Or the carpets, really. I mean, you do sometimes, but. Yeah, you don't ever clean the bottom. No. Of the shop. <laughs> no. Although oh I did because I'm a psycho. The other day, I had my like, you know, you have like house slippers that you don't yeah. wear out. Yeah. yeah. Or sometimes you do. I <laughs> Sometimes you do. I was so like, I don't know. I was just like doing 10,000 things. And I went to go, I went to go get my nails done and I ran to the place and I'm sitting there and I like put my feet up to get <laughs> like the pedicure and I'm like, slippers. fucking A. I mean, <laughs> my goddamn house slippers. Not because I cared about how it looked. No, but because, because now I you knew got that you couldn't have, wear them at home. Yes. And I had to go home and like sterilize the bottom with like alcohol yeah. swabs. I was like, yeah. oh my God. Because no wonder, like, you know, no telling yeah. what I was stepping I panic. In. If someone has shoes on <gasps> in my house and like I it's can't. like a party, I'm like. I just, it actually, it really riles me You have to breathe. I just have to. Oh, my God. I'm thinking, how are we going to disinfect these floors? I I don't even think of it. I mean, everybody takes their shoes off when they come to my house Uh because our shoes, the first thing I do is take my shoes off, Mm -hmm. and so does everyone else. But it's not like a rule. But when people see those shoes, they they just immediately take their shoes off. Like, you see someone's sneakers, and they're, like, dirty, and they're, like, literally, literally, like, standing. It felt weird. Really? Yeah. You know what felt weird? One time I was like at a thing and it was on a boat. And I, you guys, like I'm not very tall. And it was like <laughs> a big party event and you have to take your shoes off on boats. You can't mm-hmm. wear heels on no, a boat. No, because you could scratch the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So I literally was like I was the child at the party. And yeah, because you took it off. I had to take off my shoes. I'm still <laughs> scarred from it, clearly. I don't like to dress up and take my shoes off. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. When it you're in like weird. a nice outfit yeah, and it was like you're a just nice, like, you take like, it off and you're like, Mark. cocktail, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and I was barefoot and very short. And you're like, that's offensive. And you know what? That that's offensive. Offended me. Oh but my at gosh. a wedding, don't you like to take off your shoes or to do dance? you bring a second pair? I don't get invited well, to weddings. <laughs> I mean, you know, I feel like, yeah, I haven't been to, like, I haven't been to a wedding in so long. I don't know if it's like the We're time. too old for weddings right? now. I, I feel think like it's like, like no more weddings. Wedding, now, wedding yeah. days are over. Wedding days are over. Now it's like first kid or now it's like graduation. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> We're getting so old. It's like, my kid just graduated, graduated. <laughs> school. They're going to college. <laughs> like, meh. Oh my gosh. Like, I, I feel like we've been like, we've been like the real, like, like, we're like the old mom, like, <laughs> I know. Just like, like grandmas. Yeah. Just shooting it's, the shit. I know. It's real, though, you guys. This mm-hmm. whole no. thing, being a mom, being a woman out in the world, trying to work, trying to work, trying to work. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of it. Trying not to say things mm-hmm. that'll get us canceled. <laughs> Try not to be canceled. <laughs> my bio, that's, that's my new bio. Tamon, actor, activist. Trying not to be canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I don't Every think day. you can be an Every activist day. and not Try get... not to be canceled. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can <laughs> I don't know why I put activists up there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, trying not to be canceled. Well, you cannot be canceled if you're act- like if you're trying to be an activist for <laughs> positive things. Mm. You say something really <laughs> fucked up, but you're like, but <laughs> I support. No. If you're being positive, like, you know, you're trying to, like, women's rights, right? You probably won't get canceled for that. 
Right. Right. Here, you know, here's mm. here's something you can get canceled for. Mm. Um, <laughs> <Lay it on. laughs> Let's know so we Let's don't do it. it. I went to the zoo the other night. Uh, oh, you okay. don't, don't, you shouldn't. Mm. So I went, I wasn't thinking I got invited by a friend. It was to see my friend's kid. I was like, oh my God, we haven't seen them in so long. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So we went. Mm. And then there was protesters out there and they were like- Bulls is oh, not they were, equal. Oh. They were really protesting. And okay. Elliot, my son was like, what are they saying? And I was repeating it to mm. him. And I was like, and actually everything they're saying is right. Yeah. I felt so shameful after right. going to the zoo. But some zoos, again, not all zoos are created equal, and you need to know what zoos you're supporting because some do really amazing work. They and say San Diego does good work, right? Yeah, and, and like, like the animals are actually so. treated. See, really I'm well, like, scared like to say that. Certain, but certain <laughs> animals I mean. wouldn't be I around if it wasn't. Was was LA? LA. You went to the LA Zoo the other night? Don't but Ella, but, but here's the thing. You, Wait, but it was like a night thing. Yeah, yeah. there's night. Yeah, they have, like the night trials and the sim light music. I think the LA stuff. Zoo is actually you were in Canada. pretty good. I think. I think, yeah. I think okay. so. I. It's more about like what they. So many species would be extinct if it wasn't for these, like you know, being able to breed animals. And you know, some of these zoos do such wonderful, wonderful things. But mm. then there are others that don't. And you just need to. I think every every dollar as I get older, every dollar I spend, am I am I helping or am I hurting? And right. that comes through everywhere. It's like where you put your money. How like right. what what are the brands that you're supporting and right. you, and you pay like how do they pay their workers? Mm -hmm. Like all this stuff when you're younger, you don't think of. And again, when it's more likely to be canceled because you don't think like that. But mm -hmm. as you get older you're around a lot longer and it's like, yeah, where is my money going? Who is making my table? Who is making this food? Like, yeah. where is it coming from? And I think that you can really make a difference based on how you spend a dollar. I mean, I changed my, I had a hairdresser, not the one that we were talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. before, but like years ago here in LA, hairdresser, and we were talking and I was probably, I had probably already gone to him maybe like four or five times. Mm -hmm sitting in the chair and he was like yeah I just got back from traveling I'm like oh amazing where'd you go and he's like to Africa and I'm like amazing and he, he's like yeah I got my my lion head and I was like what yeah what, what you thought, did yeah. what and he was a trophy hunter and I literally from that moment in the chair I'm, I'm like done. I will never no go back and I never did I never went back to him I had, but it's, fr I told you we had, it's my we had friends I didn't know yes and new friends and we found out the husband was a, a trophy hunter and we were out can't do it. There are like, some things, and we were talking about this before, can you be friends with people who have opposing political right. beliefs or belief systems? Right. And for me, it's like, yeah, I don't I don't care if someone like roots for a different soccer team, but if your political views and beliefs are hurting other people, then I find it really difficult to be in that space. Right. Yeah. Um, what about though, here's where I have mm -hmm. a hard time because I do have friends with completely opposite political views. Mm -hmm. And I feel very confident and very loving about the friendship, mm -hmm. like a hundred percent solid salt of the earth mm -hmm. people. I think that sometimes when people are born and raised and culturally and whatever their reasons are, I can't claim to understand. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm like, that's something that they've learned that's been passed down to them that means something to them. And I don't agree with it, mm -hmm. but how can I turn away from a friendship that is so beautiful and pure mm. because of those things? But the problem is, and I've tried to figure this out too, is that there are certain things that people vote for that are so harmful for certain groups of people that means that there's a deficit within that person's character. And that deficit might not show up in the friendship, but there's a deficit in their moral compass and in their belief system. Mm. Because if you are directly hurting people and a class and a group of people that we they might not be hurting us because we are privileged in so many ways. But there is a problem and they put certain things on a hierarchy than other things. And that means there's a deficit within someone's character. And I do believe that when you live a life and you meet enough people, you travel enough places and you don't even have to travel to like overseas, you can just travel to different states. You meet enough people to have those conversations and be open to having those conversations to understand why people are feeling certain ways and how this is hurt, hurting different. Like my best friend is from Ethiopia. She was raised in New York City. She works at Stanford. And I 
listened to her. I've obviously always been an ally, but I've listened to her and I'm like, wow, the certain votes hurt her and like directly hurt her. And I find it hard to be friends with people that are directly hurting people that I love. And Mm. I think that, again, I talk about like a deficit within someone's character that isn't open to understanding why certain things are harming people. And it's a hard one because, yeah, we've got- But wouldn't it then go mm. the other way? Like if you want other people to understand, wouldn't you then want to understand them? Mm. Yes, but do you want to ultimately be friends with someone that is directly hurting someone else? That's the thing. Like you can understand them, but at some point people change and they understand or they don't. Mm. And if they don't, you're ex- we have to accept, and that's up to the person, we have to accept that that is a flaw within someone. And that is, it's hard. It's a hard thing to reckon with. And we have friends that are very opposing on certain things, but it, again, it's a, it's a, it's a compass and it's a moral compass that you have to say like, well, am I okay with this? Mm. Am I okay with the fact that the friendship is great, but like the hard hitting issues that really do affect people that I love, they're directly, you know, making it a problem for them. That's a hard one. It's a hard, it's a hard one. So it's then really do hard. you have that conversation with the person and be like, what are your whys? Help me understand this. I think it's always an open conversation with both people. I think if we don't have those conversations, then we're stuck. Like I said, I yeah, think the U.S. is stuck. And then we don't get anywhere. Then it's the same right? thing. Right. 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 But I think at some point, I think at some point with the information that is out there, you can't stand on us on the side of the people that are hurting others. Mm-hmm. Like at some point, mm-hmm. that conversation has to be open enough to go. No, I I don't want to hurt these. I don't I don't want to hurt these people. You know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and again, I talk about back to that word deficit. There's 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 a deficit there that is lacking. I think. I don't know. I might be wrong, but that's just my belief. And right. again, it might be different for other people. Right. Do you have any thoughts over there, little <laughs> little built in head? It's hard. We have we have friends yeah. of all different. Well, I think it's also to how they present it, right? Like there are people. Obviously, people are going to have different perspectives on things, and it's like everyone's entitled to their opinion. At some, I mean, I don't agree with some of the opposing things that people have opinions on, but it's also like I have like enough respect to just be like, okay, that person thinks a certain way. It might not be the same way as me, but they're not like in my face doing mm-hmm. it. But like, does it depend on what the thing is? Because again, it's a very different mm-hmm. thing to be like a different soccer, like whatever. Yeah. But if it's like they're really against, you know, the the things that are happening to us right now. Like women's women, rights right, as an example. And they're yes. really against it. Then are you just like, well, or are you just like, this will ultimately hurt my kid? I honestly don't think I'm even friends with That's people. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like that. you don't I have know. Right. right. It's harder it's, it's, for people that live like yeah. on that fine line or probably raised. Like my husband was raised very differently and yeah. he's definitely, we believe in the same things. But I think it's harder for people who have family members mm-hmm. or people well, that you married know. married couples that have complete opposite views. My they mom and her talk husband. about it. Right. Mm. Right. Horrendously mm. different. I mean- vastly different. I don't think mm-hmm. I could do that because I feel like that. Mm-hmm. But who's to say? I'm not in the situation or position. But I think or it's hard mm-hmm. for them. It's really, really hard. Yeah. That they have very different and they watch their different shows upstairs and downstairs mm-hmm. and they don't, you know. Talk about it. They've right, tried or, to get to a place mm-hmm. where they don't talk about it because okay. it affects my mom. Right. She right. has a yeah. really mm-hmm. hard time with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we are privileged. We have to know that. We're privileged to not, we don't live a lot of these issues on a day-to-day basis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're privileged to be like, well, we could continue our lives, but a lot of people can't. And a lot of these things, like we're even talking about healthcare, like being in Indonesia, we got seen for $45 and there are like 45,000 Americans that die every year from not having healthcare. There's three, 30 million people who don't have healthcare and we have healthcare. So it's not something we... Like, obviously, we can be allies, like you said, mm. but and like try to fight and even advocate for advocate for it. But if it doesn't directly affect us, mm-hmm. it's probably less on the frontal right. lobe of like, oh, my God, we have to fight right. for this. Right. But it's like not cool that yeah. kids are dying. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And and because we're privileged, yeah. it's 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 sometimes you don't like we have to 
we have to do more. I think. Mm -hmm. I think so. You know, it's hard too with the political thing because it's like a two party system. So it's like these ideas are generally supported on this side and these ideas are generally supported on this side. And it doesn't necessarily mean that maybe somebody on the other side agrees with all those ideas. Absolutely. Right. Maybe there's one overarching thing that is like the thing that's making them go that side. So that also makes it hard because I have friends that are totally on the opposite political aisle than me. And I know it's not that they don't want women's rights and things like that. But to them, they prioritize It's the a hierarchy of the issues, yes, right? Yes, exactly. Are, is that hierarchy of the issues the issues that aren't important to them because they're privileged enough for them not to be important to them mm. hurting other people? Well, that's that the is, thing that, that, is a, that's, that is a character trait then, right? Or like a moral compass. We'll go back to that, right? If the hierarchy is based in what matters to us most, like less taxes, Mm -hmm. what about the things that are happening to so many other people that aren't on our, again, frontal lobe because it doesn't affect us directly? I mean, mean, it would be nice if they prioritized other things, but like it doesn't necessarily mean that they support, right? right? Right. So it's hard. Right. Right. And also I think that you are educated Mm -hmm. on these things and you're very passionate about it and you have the information. Right. And I don't know what brought you there. I don't know what brought you there. Mm -hmm. But I think that sometimes other people can be in their own life. Mm -hmm. These issues are not important to them because they've never had to be. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they're not educated on it in right. the same way right. that a lot of people, especially in Los Angeles, right. are. Yeah. Yeah. We've you had go to other places. Oh, yeah. 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 For sure. They're not, they don't even know what to mm-hmm. look up and educate themselves on because it's not in their sphere. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? But I think we all can be guilty of that. You know? Oh, oh my goodness. I'm so like, mm-hmm. uh, You know, if it's like one of those things that's not directly affecting you, sometimes I can be like, oh shit. Right. Like, this is something that I want to know more about mm-hmm. or but my friend, myself. like in Indonesia, like she's my best friend in the whole world. Her name's Ariam. She works in Stanford. Like there was a few times she said something. She was like, oh no, I don't go to that place or no, I don't go there. And I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, it's because you're black. Like, mm-hmm. and, and she said, yeah, I don't feel safe there. Mm-hmm. And I thought, wow, like I need to be think like she's my best friend. Mm-hmm. She is the godmother of my child. Like, and so back to that point is like, I find it hard to be friends with anyone that would directly be hurting her. I know I understand of what you're course. saying about the education part mm-hmm. of it. But mm-hmm. then at some point, do we give people a pass for just deciding to not be educated about it? Do you know what I mean? That's like, do we just go, second we're just going to accept you for yeah. like not, I, I, yeah, do we just accept people for not even asking more or like trying to learn, mm-hmm. right? You know? It's a tough question. It is. Mm-hmm. It is. Sure glad. <laughs> sure glad we sure we glad. Glad. I just we think really it went there. <laughs> whatever we can do to like just try to learn and understand. And I, yeah. I agree. Like I'm I'm not sitting here going like, yes, right, right or wrong. But I'm just saying that we need to have the discussion and open the discussion and, uh, yeah, and listen mm-hmm. to both sides. My husband's very much about if we don't listen, we're not going to. Because some people believe certain things based in their own lens of the world, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Everyone so, does. Everyone. Mm-hmm. And we can't. Every single everyone human does. is only looking through their lens. And, a, mm-hmm. and I do believe that, and I'm not going to get political, but Trump got in because a lot of people felt like they weren't seen. And a lot of parts of America felt like they didn't have anyone standing up for them. And whatever that was for them, they found that in him, whether it was, you know, and I think that that's why that happened mm-hmm. is a lot of people felt like, well, I need to, I need to be seen. I feel like lost or like whatever I'd that be is. curious mm-hmm. to like ask. Yeah. You why? know? Yeah. Well, that's the question I always ask is help me understand. Mm-hmm. Right. Because right. instead of shutting down, and my therapist said this to me the other day, which I was like, oh, wow, that's really a good point. She was, she was like, when people feel anxious, mm. They Fear. want they want to check something off the box, so mm. they want to shut down the conversation, so they can move on and move on from the anxiety. Mm. Instead of sitting in the discomfort, mm-hmm. one will typically try to shut down the conversation. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "That's brilliant because." can we get more uncomfortable? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And instead of shutting down the conversation of this is right, this is wrong, mm-hmm. can we get more uncomfortable and be like, help me understand what your whys are? Mm-hmm. And yeah. like, 
is there something for me to learn? Mm -hmm. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we can all learn. We should all be learning, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, But if we just take the stance and shut it down, right. Then Mm -hmm. then we're not learning. That's what I'm saying. It's like curious. I want to know why. Right. Same. I I want to understand. And a lot of people like vote for certain things that I don't think they actually understand the full extent of it. Like they say, Mm -hmm. well, no abortions, but it's like, well, then no IVF. Right. Mm Mm-hmm. So do you understand that no abortions, no IVF? Because right. if it's if it's then no embryos, mm-hmm. then what do we do with those? There's it's so far reaching that mm-hmm. you know it's it's easy to just like have this like you know yeah we believe in this, but what does that really mean? And yeah. what is what is the fallout from it? And mm-hmm. What is the collateral damage from it? And what are the, about the the women who have miscarriages? This there's just so much to it there that is. isn't just like this. Mm-hmm. And there's nuances in every subject. Yeah. So it's like you know trying to. And if you've ever read a voter's guide, you know how confusing when they are, you know, writing out these propositions, it's so hard to even understand yeah. because they're negating themselves right. within the description. And right. it's like, you know, it's so for the average person, it's really hard for them to like, I'm you always know. like, can I have a cheat sheet? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> yeah. But even the cheat sheets, I'm not going to lie. I'll be completely honest. When I was like in my early twenties, I used to just go down the line and check for whatever was in the party, party that right, I yeah. was right. down with. And right. that was it. Right. right. And I was like, we're good here. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Of course. But that's so such blind faith. Mm-hmm. And it's not educated. Mm-hmm. Right. Because when I sit and look at them, I may not 100% agree with either side. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, and you don't know that unless you're educated. I don't but know. But the truth in life, which probably <laughs> this is, is lies somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. Right. The truth, of the truth in anything, it lies somewhere in the middle. And I don't feel like we're even getting closer to the middle. So. That's why everybody should vote for broads on top. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are the next That's politicians. Right. This is a political party you I, want to be. We really with. went there, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, can you cut out the entire show? <laughs> <laughs> the show will be 10 minutes. <laughs> It'll be 10 minutes no. long. I know. I'm sorry. I feel like I asked a question. You, you know what? I think, I think these I know, questions are because I so want to know. I know, but you want to know. <laughs> and these it questions are important. They are and, important. And again, I think that the ultimate conversation piece is just to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We're going to say why... we're a variety show. Right, ladies? <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what <laughs> we <show>. are. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for coming and talking to us again. Mm-hmm. Again, and we, we want to we'll keep, keep doing this it. ship yes. going. Yes. Not the political ship, probably. <laughs> like we're gonna sink that one, but we're definitely <laughs> gonna keep it going. Yeah, yeah. And who knows? Expand. People want to talk about it. Yeah, we're expand. gonna expand. No, we're just showing that we are gonna. Can we cover all areas, all of them? But all the funny them. thing is, like you know, when I post on my Instagram all the the fluff stuff, it's fine. But when I really talk about things that like people are yeah, affected no, by absolutely thousands of mm-hmm. people are just like thank god we're yeah. talking about mm-hmm. this because i think it's really easy to lie in the comfortable right yeah. um, or talk about period sex yeah like although that's uncomfortable on the first it's like, comfortable that's, for us now yeah, we're like no <laughs> I think that's totally uncomfortable. and i think you know politics as long as someone's that's not like so staunch and want mm-hmm. like just having that conversation yeah, i think talking. it's really important yeah mm-hmm. i agree Totally. You know, yeah. I agree. They'll never release this episode, Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the can. Oh my God. <laughs> Love you, ladies. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey. <laughs> so, that was a great what's interview. New. <laughs> what's new in everyone's life, lives, Rob? Rob, since you're never around. <laughs> people will write us like hey guys love the show be nice to rob really yeah yeah be nice i'm to like me. we're so nice we're to rob. so nice to rob rob you got so much love for being on camera finally oh did he Oh my God. They were well, like, oh, we can put a face to a nail. Oh, Rob. <laughs> oh, Robbie. Tonight's Rob. the night with Robbie. Tonight's the night with Robbie. I Do watched get that, that movie reference? this weekend. Nope. You don't get that reference? Nobody puts baby in the corner? I carried a yeah. watermelon. Uh, that's Dirty Dancing. Tonight's the night with Robbie. Same movie. Have you seen that movie ever? Uh, probably once a long time ago. It's such a good movie. Just one. Patrick Swayze, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's not does he kill my, like, you? 
What do you mean? Kills me dead watching him. I'm like, that was... He was... I've told you guys this, right? When I... I was a little young to be watching the movie, but Same. whatever. How old? I was like nine, probably. Yeah, okay, I don't know. Because okay. I think about Briar's about to be nine, and I'm like, there's no way in hell she could ever watch that. But I had a bunk bed, uh-huh. and I tore Patrick Swayze's picture out of one of those magazines, and he was taped up to the bunk. So every night before bed, I was like, good night, Patrick. I love him. I Would love you kiss you. it? Well, I couldn't reach. The bunk His bed? body in that movie, everything in that movie. He I was me so sick. in love he with him. Still makes me sick when I watch. I it. was so in love with him in that movie. Me too. Like him in that, and Johnny Depp and Cry Baby. Oh yeah. Can you relate? So, <laughs> who so was much. your first crush? Yeah, who was your first like movie celebrity actor, whatever crush? It's gonna be someone super obscure and like, it's like Misha Barton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I think Misha Barton. Uh, I don't know. What do, what do you mean? mean you don't know? Think well, about it. I'm like, trying to think. About what it. was the first movie you watched and you were like, oh, "I like girls." Um, <laughs> I don't know what the first one was. Well, can you think of any from like? I mean, a I kid? think of like Titanic and stuff. Like Kate Winslet. Oh, he's older. I mean, he's young. Wait, yeah. Kate, Kate Winslet. I mean, mm-hmm. I really like that choice. It's a good choice mm-hmm. for you. I, I like it. Who else? I'm trying to think. I mean, like the Olsen twins, because we're about the same age. Oh! He's like in a New York minute or whatever yeah. they're or, like. Uh, <laughs> uh, Julia Stiles. Save the last. Oh, la- oh yeah. Wait, like save 10 the Things I Hate About You. Dance? And Is that what it's yeah. called? Save yeah, the ten, that whole era. Yeah. Okay. This is okay, all tracking. This is interesting. Yeah. Never, ever knew this before. Julia Stiles. Or yep. her, I think her sister in 10 Things Say About You as oh, well. Uh, the cute girl. She played um, like Alex Mack. Or um, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. Alex Mack. Yeah. Yeah. I know your era. I see you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know who I also loved, you guys? Was Edward Furlong in Terminator 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, River Phoenix this is our era. Stand By Me. <laughs> yeah. I know that was your, yeah. That was not your jam? No. I didn't love that movie as a kid. Like, it scared me. Oh, my God. That's They were going to see a dead body. Like, I was not the leeches. We grew up different. I just, you know, well, my brother, (laughs) like, I I know what you loved. And, like, so my brother, like, Lost Boys, like, he would always watch it. And I know you die for it. And I was like, I don't know if I love this. You were a little scared. I like Newsies. No. I was really into Christian Bale and Newsies. (laughs) It's a real thing. I watched Stand By Me and Dirty Dancing this weekend. You did? Yeah. And Stand By Me? Yeah. Olivia was at a wedding in Maine, Boxer which also, rolls. since we talked about Dirty Dancing, you said it was basically Dirty Dancing. It was Dirty Dancing. It was like being at Kellerman's. <gasps> yeah. I would love to be at Kel. That place exists in the Catskills. I don't know if it's still there, though. It's amazing. You? I have no idea, Dude, but this was like it. How amazing would it be if it still existed and we could go there Yep. and stay in the cabins? Yep. Ugh. Uh, I would. I can't that would handle. Be, listen. I'm planning something if it exists. And we got to check if you, it exists. You plan for a lot of things. What um, was the other thing? Like uh, Cracker Barrel. Yeah, well, trips, what are we doing that? Like Joshua Tree sound bath trips. Like, oh yeah, we're supposed to go to the Integratron. Yeah. Why don't we do it for our birthdays? Our birthdays are close enough. Whose? Mine and the yours. The one that just happened. Yeah. <laughs> the one that just happened, and then yours mine's is in there, October. So in between. Why don't we plan a trip for a weekend? Okay, this is what we could we could do Joshua Tree and Tegatron are like together. And, and is Cracker, Cracker Barrel, Barrel on the way. is on the way. Oh, see? Let's Boom. do it. <laughs> and bring, How excited bring are this you? all on the road. Yeah, we're absolutely we're gonna document the Dude, whole we thing. Should, <laughs> we should, we should have, record from, we should from record Joshua Tree. From Cracker Barrel. And Cracker Barrel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like Why, how, from we're gonna have a porch. video. We're just gonna be we're just gonna be like Blair really, Witch. Yeah, the whole thing, Rob and the entire tron is so bad. So good. Oh my goodness. Oh, you know where I went that was so 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 cool? Where? Salem, Massachusetts. Oh, have you ever been? I have. It is so cool. I was like the I've Salem not- witch trial. Yes. That's it's a whole awesome. little witch town. <gasps> Have you ever it. heard of it? Of course I've heard of I it. I know you've heard of Salem, but <laughs> did wish, you know she that it's- no. I just said I've Salem never witch heard. What are, wit- what are the but witch I mean, trials? Like, of the town. Yeah. I know that there's a town and it's like the witch town. <laughs> that it's like Where all they witchy? conjured- 
Well, I, I, I mean, I've like never the whole been. town is witchy. Like every store is witches. Well, they've it's leaned like, into it as like a tourist attraction. Yeah, yeah and I love it. Did I'm you the, guys get out east a lot when you were younger? No. Well, my mom's from Philly, so we would always go would. back east to Jersey and Philly. We would do a lot of like East Coast Civil War sites. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, were, that was our road trip vacations was like, let's go visit Antietam and Gettysburg. And- oh, my God. Gettysburg. No. That's so funny. Yeah, we did a lot of trip. We didn't do Civil War. I feel like Cassie David said that Larry David would always take her to all the Civil War sites. Yeah, that, that was my dad's thing. That was your he dad. to take us four kids to go see the battlegrounds of Antietam where yeah. how did that hit you as a kid uh I I thought it was boring at the time yeah but but now like, you're like I've seen da 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 well now like we'll go back and like go visit those sites when we take vacations as well like those those are the interesting places to go to now are you excited to show Cal and Vincent uh, I don't think he's going to give a shit <laughs> so <laughs> not. I'll hopefully have learned, <laughs> I'll, I'll have learned that lesson um but yeah, going back there now is interesting. Of like, we went to some house in Tennessee that was where some battle happened, and there was still like blood in the wood panels. And I don't like that. I yeah, don't want bullet see blood. holes in the walls. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it is interesting now as an adult. We went to some. There was some fort. I don't know what fort it was, but it was the building still stood and we went and explored it while we were in Maine. And like, I was like, oh my God, like take a second to like hear this and feel this, like what went down here? When I was a kid, I was like, who cares? But now I care. Yeah. I was Jeff. I could see Jeff being like super into it. He's the one who was like, can we go explore that (laughs) fort? And we did. But then when we went to Salem, they have the houses where they did actual um, oh, burned people like at the stake. Yeah. And to me, I'm like, this is fascinating. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, yeah, it's gnarly to feel the history of a yeah. place. And you're like, that actually happened right here. We went to the building where the telephone was created. Like, it's cool to do now, but as mm-hmm. a kid, it was lost on me completely. All those field trips as kids, you were just like, who cares? Who cares? I, I yeah. do wonder, though, if it influenced you caring about it now. I don't know. Like having some sort of base knowledge about it, and I don't know if there is there some sort of nostalgia for it when you revisit it, the, or the witch stuff. Yeah, because yeah, I for sure was burned at the stake there <laughs> and <at> lifetimes <laughs> ago. Yeah, yeah. it uh, does feel really like that, like yeah. weird, crazy nostalgia. And even when we went to the fort, I was mm-hmm. like, "Ooh, like you can." Feel yeah, the energy of like, that feels like past life nostalgia to you, not like yeah. trips when you were a kid. It reminds me of Phoebe in the episode of Friends, right. where, she goes, <laughs> where she's like in like a civil war, or whatever, and her arm gets blown off, and she's like, "Gauze, can I get some gauze here?" Okay, anyone who knows Friends will appreciate that. I appreciate it. I promise, your arm gets blown off. No. Oof. It feels more like past life than it does, oh, I remember doing these kind of things as a kid. I remember a field trip as a kid. They took us all to go watch a screening of Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman and rate it if we thought if we were into it. What? It sounds like you just It got sounds like a focus tri- group. Yeah, you got tripped <laughs> it, was, it was. That was our field trip in really? elementary school. I remember it to this day. Would you rate it? And you it? had like a button to do red or green. Like so obviously. Things you liked throughout the movie throughout the yeah it was like the pilot or something and i remember the whole introduction i was like this is boring it was like red because it was like the and then the whole episode i green lit it you did it was similar to heart of dixie isn't it i don't think so what was it dr quinn medicine woman wasn't she a i mean that no? was it was like it's the female doctor same thing or something. Oh, same thing <laughs> same same wasn't it like wasn't a period that the thing? promise of heart of dixie what when was Heart of Dixie taking place? <laughs> it was current, Rob. It was contemporary. Why do you look at the like time? you were from the 1800s? Yeah, why did you talk like that? I was in a bustle. <laughs> <laughs> no. I want a reboot of Heart of Dixie. Do you? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, good. Rob especially does. <laughs> yeah. That was my weird field trip. We we went to the mission a lot in Santa Barbara, and I'd always be so bored. It's pretty so there. Bored. It's beautiful. Now really? I like going. But yeah. then I was like, I don't care. 
remember about this. Did you guys do zoo field trips a lot? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. All I remember I don't know. Santa Barbara Zoo. We did, we did the zoo. We did uh, the Field Museum in Chicago. Chicago. Like, eh, Natural <laughs> History Museum. Yep. The aquarium. Up the Pacific. Sorry, that's the one Not here. That I know, one. I know, but I can't hear that without <laughs> seeing the jingle. Yeah. And the big one was Medieval Times. We did a Medieval, medieval Times. Oh, that was fun. Yep. That's fun. That was like sixth grade. Do you want to know one trip. of my hidden talents? Please. Jousting? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I have no memory. I remember commercial jingles like no fucking other. We know. Spill it, splatter it. It doesn't matter. Have I done this before? Yes. <laughs> You're like, I don't remember ever doing this before, but let me tell you something. Go ahead. We'd something like to I've cre- never told anyone. Yeah. Please do. I've done Go it ahead. Before? Yeah. I'm not doing it again. No, you have to. You didn't do it. You didn't do it. It's been years. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. You guys, what's my problem? Your memory. Yeah. <laughs> Your brain, I think. I forgot. <laughs> There's uh, supplements that you need to be taking. For my memory? Yes. Jeff's reading a book right now on Alzheimer's, <laughs> and it's like there's so many things you can do. You think do I have for- Alzheimer's? <laughs> well, I think what the big, the big thing for Alzheimer's is just physical activity, too. It's like being more preventative with it. And- I feel like I'm going to cry. <laughs> I mean, you might. I feel like it's not what I'm saying. <laughs> Basically, what he was sharing, though, no, what he was sharing was that the biggest indicator of a troubled brain later in life is starting to lose your memory younger, right? And you want to do what you can (laughs) to give your brain what it needs now. Do you think you're making her feel better by this explanation? No, I had like severe head trauma (laughs) young. I know. So I don't think you're like a linebacker for a I think it's a combination of that and smoking a lot of pot. I don't think it's Alzheimer's. I'm saying we want to prevent ourselves from getting I used to think Alzheimer's forever was old timers. So did I. You did. Yeah, old timers disease. Duh. Because it makes because they're old timers. (laughs) Right? Yes. For so long, like maybe it's only within the past five years I corrected it. Five, I did five months. She's <laughs> like within the past like minute. <laughs> Just now. I realized that there was something I snorted. <laughs> did you ever think it was the... old timers? No. no that makes really? so much sense. It makes so much more sense. I than... know. Yeah. I was like, oh yeah, they have old timers. Yeah, they're old timers. We're not making fun of anyone. <laughs> no, you may, I mean, you're making fun of yourself. Yes. Yeah. God, I feel I don't feel safe. Oh, I want you to feel safe. <sighs> okay. Go ahead, sing those jingles. It'll bring you a sense <laughs> of nostalgia and safety, please. Yeah, can you give us like a Jack in the Box jingle? No. Uh, what other one do you have besides Subway? the Slip It, Slip It? Oh, what? The, the Slim Jim? The Slip It, Slip No, it. that's my story that I always thought it was step into a Slim Jim. But what it's it? snap, snap into, into a, a slim, slim gym. gym. Hmm. Did you think it was I step thought in? it was step into a slim gym. This is my <laughs> person. <laughs> That's my person over here. What else have you thought was wrong? Those are my favorite. No, we talk about this. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, no, we've talked about words that people say wrong. Yes. No, I'm talking about songs Just or lyrics. Songs or oh, li- oh, yeah. Lyrics I always get wrong. Always. I thought it was every time you go away, you take a piece of meat with you. You've told I know this about you. What about you, Rob? Have you ever gotten lyrics wrong? Not for songs anyone anyone would know. Right. Right. You're too avant garde. I have a lot of them, but I can't remember <laughs> currently. I have so many. I get them all the time. What is that about someone's brain that no matter what, they hear it wrong? I think it's head trauma <laughs> from like an accident when you were younger. That, that happened to me. Mm. But what I'm saying is there are supplements and things you could do for your brain, like hyperbaric oxygen chamber. What? Yeah. That's what athletes do that have had head trauma. They have it at Jeff's work. You, you go in there? Mm-hmm. And you breathe in. It's just your head, though. You put on this, like, no. scuba You go helmet. in. <laughs> I believe it. You go <laughs> in. It's a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. I don't know really do what it st- does. Is it like when you get an MRI? And- no. Okay. No, it's like this big pod that you go in. Like Jeff will go it's in a and big like pod. check it's his not emails and do his work in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can handle that. It's like a phone booth. 
It is? It's like a big pod. That you stand up in? I don't know if we stand up in it. Well, if he's doing emails, he's probably sitting. He's probably (laughs) sitting. (laughs) But maybe worth looking into. Yeah. Sounds good to me. I could use all the help I can get. Yeah. Me too. (laughs) I'm losing my memory fast. I know you are. Like really fast. Mine's always been gone, but you're fast. Scary. Are you? No. Um... No. <laughs> Rob just can't relate to us in any way. I know. I used to be really good at like if I've met someone, I their will remember them. I'll remember their name. I'm bad I'll remember with, I'm, where. I'm bad with names. Um, but I have like a weird thing with faces where I'll recognize someone that I haven't seen in 12 years or saw on a random show a long time ago. Yeah. I'm losing that ability. People will be like, oh, yeah, we met here last week. And I'm like, not a clue. I've never like, had that clue. Nothing. It's like not there. It's not being I've stored. I've never remembered that. No, ever. <laughs> don't remember. Don't remember names. I even like question myself. Even if I know it. Oh, I do I that still too. question. And I'm like, I think I said the name wrong. <laughs> I think that's the wrong name. I watched a movie this weekend that you guys should watch the trailer for and we can discuss. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. What is it? Oh, jeez. Um, it's this Norwegian. Oh, here movie. we go. Nope. Mm-mm. Called Good Boy. No, oh, Rob. That I would like your thoughts on. Oh, oh no. <laughs> We're going to go to na- nappy time. Go. Rob, what are you making us watch? <laughs> it's a, he has a pet that's like a person dressed in a dog costume. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Are you making that's what the fuck crazy? What happens? Well, don't tell us what happens. Yeah. You Why you're gonna watch, watch it. it? I'm not gonna watch it, but I want to know. That's actually sick enough that I might watch it. It's about this this woman meets a guy on a dating app, goes out on a date with him, goes back home with him, and he's got a uh, <laughs> pet dog, but it's just a human in a dog costume. <laughs> Um, this is the kind of shit that Rob <laughs> watches on his weekends. Where did you hear of this movie? I just saw a trailer for it, and you're like, "That looks really fucked like, up." This um, sounds great. I'm gonna have friends over, and we're gonna watch this. And how to go? It was fun. It, I mean, it was good. So you invite friends over to watch movies? Uh yes, but we were watching uh, the UFC fight. Ah, and then okay. it ended very early. And so then you're like, like we're gonna watch this movie. Let's watch this weird movie. So that, did you like was it? Was it good? I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's short too. It's like an hour and ten minutes. So it's enough. I didn't have like super high expectations on the movie. Do they show who the guy is in the costume? Yeah. So, so I was, we just spoiler alert it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> so they she goes and sees this guy, and then. The dog is there and she's freaked out and she's like the dog's watching them have sex. Uh yeah. like all dogs do. Yeah. But this is a human in a dog costume. So she Go leaves, on. goes home, tells her roommate about it, and the roommate's like Wait, 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 hold on. Does she know at this point that he's watching? Yeah. No. I when mean, she has sex, or is it afterwards? No, so she's like, sex, oh. That piece of it's not super. But she sees the dog in the corner, like watching them, right? It's not in the act of sex. Like, that isn't They're really just hooking a part up. of it. Yeah. Okay. And then her roommate, like, guilts her and is like, you're shaming him. Like, and, well, oh my God. then she also realizes he's some, like, she, the roommate recognizes the guy. He's this, like, millionaire, comes from a lot of money from some, like, famous family. So she's like, you were on a date with this guy? Like, you shouldn't shame him for this, like, you should be more open-minded, basically. Uh, and convinces her, like, all right, give him another chance. And then she goes and continues to see him. Yeah. Here's my question. And? If all are consenting, do you, do you see it as a problem? If the guy wants to be the dog and they accept That's that, how he explains like, it to her. Is what's like, wrong with that? He's lonely. He has no one. Like, mm. this is what he wants. But it's like he's friends with the billionaire dude. 
Yeah, they don't. He's his dog. Yeah, he's his dog. Well, like, I mean, he's he, like knew, his he said he knew friend. him from school. Not his best friend. They don't talk. He's not allowed to act like a human. She's like, he's like, whatever you do, don't treat him like a human. You need to treat him like a dog. Oh. But he comes out of the dog costume. No. Ever? Maybe to shower. I'll get, I'll, so I'll get into the, I'll get into the, the spoiler. spoiler. Like they go away on a, he's like, let's go to a cabin, me, you, and Frank. And he has to bring the dog. <laughs> brings the dog. And this is amazing. <laughs> and when they get there, so the girl kind of sucks too. Okay. She's like, shows up late to their date. She's like on her phone the whole time. So they uh-huh. set it up as like, you don't really like her that much. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're at the cabin and he's like, you're on your phone too much. Let's like make this a no phone weekend. Takes her phone and Uh-oh. like puts it away. Then they're like drinking and hanging out and <laughs> in the middle, like late at night. And then <laughs> the guy, the millionaire leaves for a second and the dog like quickly comes up to her and he's like, this guy's fucking insane. You need to help me get out of oh, this. No. Oh no. Oh like, no. He's crazy. You need to help me. Oh, no. And then <laughs> chaos ensues. Shit. So the millionaire's the crazy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like paid this guy to pretend Not he's a paid. dog? He's, he's, like, he's like kidnapped him Kidnapped him right? has him. And then like the next day she Jeez, she man. decides to no, like I watch it. Me too. <laughs> take him for a walk. And he's like, you need to kill him. Like if you don't kill him, like I'm um, Kill who? Kill the, the millionaire. millionaire guy. Oh, and oh, she's like, like, you, you should just kill the. Oh, got it. He's like, she's like, you should just do it. And he's like, I'm, I'm. He's too afraid to do it. He's like, I'm. Well, how does she know which one to believe? Yeah. I mean, I'd believe the guy in the dog costume. But what about what if it, the dog guy in the dog costume is a complete psychopath and is like, because yeah, I want to be a dog. With it. Why would the millionaire ever leave them alone together? Knowing that he's kidnapped this guy or whatever, yeah. and wouldn't think that the guy would tell the girl what was going on because right. he has like tortured him enough that he has he's him made like him, he's forced him into submission. Basically, yeah, that's why I he says know. he won't. There's do holes anything. here. Sure, there's there's absolutely <laughs> holes in this movie. <laughs> they don't that's know. why I went in. I went into it with very low expectations of like this will be fun. I'm not gonna. Huh. I'm not gonna be blown away by the writing. <laughs> I have an idea for movie nights. Hear me out. Uh-oh. I think that we should have movie nights with friends where we force them to watch movies that they don't want to watch. Like, you should force us to watch this movie Something like or that. movies Except like this. You both even though we this make this you now. watch even Dirty Dancing. Though, and we or make you watch Dirty Dancing. Like, China's never seen The Notebook. I'm like, oh, really? I'm going to tie you down, tape your eyes open, and make you, make you <laughs> Listen, watch this it. This is torture now. That's yeah. torture for Rob, the notebook. Yeah, I, I think we should do that. Hold I on. think we should torture each other. each other. I, yeah. If we do it, I mean, there's a version of this could, that could be like the book club that we torture didn't, club. That we didn't club. do. Yeah. yeah. Where we each. Everyone has a book club. Yeah. We're doing a movie club. But we each take a turn. Yes, I know. We each take a turn, but it has to be, you have to watch. But Something you that you know the person wouldn't watch wouldn't on their watch. own. watch. You have to expose them to things that they would never. yeah. yeah, yeah otherwise been open to. Yep. Like this movie, we would have never even come across or stumbled Ever. across. Ever. But now I kind of want to see it. Yeah. But what's <laughs> it called? <laughs> good good boy. <laughs> Olivia, the next post is dressed as a dog. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Can I say something? Yes. Did you not see this man who paid, I don't know if this is the right amount, oh, paid a 20 lot of grand money to, yeah. to make a suit mm-hmm. where he looks like an actual dog? I forget the kind of dog. It's, it's like, like a, a like a lassie or dog, a, long yes, hair. Right. He fully paid it's like, like 40 20, grand, 20 yeah. to 40 grand. It was a lot. For this very lifelike dog costume that he puts on and he acts like a dog. He just like sits in the Where? park. Where? Where does he go? To like dog parks? I don't know. Does he have an owner? Like does yes. someone walk him know. on a leash? I don't know. We'd have to look it up. But there, I saw something about this. Rob I, I've seen too. it too, of course. Of course. <laughs> but it's… Uh, what do you mean, of course? Where, where are you guys fi- Do it's you guys play colony. with each other on the dark web? Japanese man drops $14,000 oh, on... Look. I mean, that's a man. Oh, my God. It's Lassie. Yeah. Yeah. In a full, like... But it's not... It's a thing he can just put on. At first, I thought it meant he was like that forever. And I was like... <laughs> you thought it was dog? like... It was plastic surgery and Yeah, like hair. I thought it was like a full transformation. <laughs> Well, aren't there like, there's a bunch of furries, right? Like there's people that are really into that. 
oh well like cosplay like when they're like, like larpers yeah or no when they actually wear the they like, wear the costumes yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a it's a fetish right yeah so your question is is it wrong if this man wants yeah. to dress like a dog or even live like a dog no i think if it's consensual <laughs> Then it's great. Fine. Like he's like, I want to be in my crate. I want someone to feed me. I want to go on walks. Like, I'm not gonna lie. There's been times I've looked at my dog and been like, "Bitch, you've got it good." Mm-hmm. She sleeps in all day. She gets up. She eats when she wants. She goes and lays down. She plays. She wrestles. We go out and work and provide for her, mm-hmm. and she's just like reaping the benefits. You know what I mean? Yeah, she has limited brain activity <laughs> compared to she's you on if you CBD. Were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, she's oh got God. a pretty good life. I think dogs have got us played. You should pitch this to Jeff that you want to be a dog. <laughs> she wants to be a dog. He'd be like, you've All fucking- right. If you were a dog, what breed would you be? Good question. Yeah. Well, I, want you to look at well, I don't know. The Here's smartest the difference. dog. I want to know what you think he looks like. Like what kind looks of dog? Like. like what would you pin him as? Because we all kind of <laughs> look like dogs in different ways. Like you know how dogs look like their owners? Like you're like a Doberman? You're like a wiener dog. <laughs> <laughs> Am I? <laughs> I'm not a wiener. No, you're like a Doberman. I am? Yeah. Yeah, I can see Doberman. Oh, I was thinking more. <laughs> I poodle. I was thinking like a really teacup poodle. No. <laughs> you're like a um you're like a Boston Terrier. He's like a Jack Russell. <laughs> a Boston Terrier? What's Why? the little yappy one? What ones? do Boston Terriers Yorkie? look like? Yeah, you're Don't they Yorkie. look like French bulldogs? I figured you would call me a Yorkie. <laughs> what? Like a like a kind of like a French bulldog, but a Boston Terrier because they're not French bulldogs because they're not as thick. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. I don't think I look like a Doberman. I'm not like long. It's like a greyhound. <laughs> I think I look more like a pit bull. You I could see, see pit bull. You're a little rough around the edges. <laughs> <laughs> I can see pit bull. <laughs> yeah, Yorkie for you though, for sure. Thanks, appreciate it. No, mm-hmm. Yorkies are too like. You've got more like a bulldog face. Like a pug? Bulldog. I have a bulldog face too. You guys. (laughs) See, this is a great game you decided. Let's insult each other and tell us what dogs we look like. (laughs) Isn't that a question all friends ask each other? (laughs) It's really fun to play about other people though. Yeah, I feel like it's ripe to hurt someone's feelings. (laughs) It's ripe? Yeah. Did your feelings get hurt? No, you didn't really... Give me Jack one. Russell's I feelings don't, don't get hurt. I don't really. <laughs> I don't know what a Jack Russell Terrier looks like what? offhand. Really? Is, isn't it the dog from Frasier? Yeah. Yeah. Does that help you? No. He doesn't know what Frasier no, is. No, I know what Frasier is. It's like the wishbone dog. <laughs> yes. I don't know what that is. I think he. I think you're right. I feel really fulfilled <laughs> by today's conversation. <laughs> You know, we went back to the Civil War. We did. We went to Norway mm-hmm. and landed in dog breeds. What else can you great ask re- for? Great recap. <laughs> great in case recap. you missed the last in 35 minutes. In case you missed. <laughs> Rachel's here to let you know. That's right. If you want a journey, hop on board. Doot, doot. Shh.